Okay, I'd like to call the Joint Special School Building Committee to order. We're at the Nashville High North Lecture Hall. It's Thursday, October 27th, 2022, and 7 p.m. Would the uh, clerk please call the roll? Yes. And you guys know we're back to the old microphone, so you have to touch them to turn them on? Yeah. Okay. All right, so Alderman Dowd? Present. Alderman Wilshire? Here. Alderman McClee? Here. Alderman Timmons? Here. Alderman Sullivan is absent. Ms. Raymond is absent. Ms. Lamphere? Here. Ms. Bishop is here. Ms. Giglio? Here. Mr. Claffey? Here. Okay. We have a quorum. Alderman Sullivan uh, couldn't be here with us tonight. He had a business um, commitment. Okay. If the clerk would please read the prayer and... Uh, um, Yes. <laughs> Would, uh, let's see, who can I click on? Ms. Raymond? No, she's not here, uh -uh. so. I'll, I'll say yeah, Gloria will do the pledge. All right, we stand for the prayer here. Almighty God, we have the high honor and the serious duty to manage the educational affairs of our beloved city. Fill us, O oh God, with a spirit of unity and understanding which enables us to face our multiple problems with a serene mind, with justice and charity for all, so that any and all decisions made by us will always be for the betterment and greater happiness of all of our fellow citizens. So help us, God. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. If there are no objections, I'd like to waive the reading of the minutes of September 22nd, 2022 and place them on file. Remarks by Chairman. Okay, some good news. The uh, Board of Aldermen did final passage on the monies for the bond money for Birch Hill and Maine Dunstable. So that program is underway. And they also passed the money for the three vestibule project. So. Sooner Sean and I have two seconds, that will be on its way too. <laughs> and anybody wants to volunteer to help us with scheduling. Uh, that's nine school projects going on and one DPW building. Uh, I have five meetings today, it's kind of busy. So. All right. And thanks everyone for coming out. School administration, Mr. Smith. Uh, just point out that next month's meeting is a tad earlier due to Thanksgiving holiday, so we're going to be meeting on the 17th of November, um, which means that the construction manager has to hustle to get all the invoices to us. But they're used to that. That's all I have. Okay. So, architect's report. Jamie? Good evening, everyone. Jamie Willett with Harriman. Uh, so we have a, a few schools uh, to, to review today. I, I did do a presentation. Um, the presentation uh, mostly revolves around uh, the Birch Hill and Maine Dunstable schools, but I do touch on the uh, middle school projects as well as 55 Franklin during, during this. So. So the agenda there, you can see. So Birch Hill and Maine Dunstable Elementary School. So um, as Alderman Dowd suggested, the, the, the bond um, was approved uh, this week. Um, and so Harriman has been uh, working diligently. I think the last time we met, we talked about a schematic design submission uh, being presented to Harvey to start looking at budgets. Um, they are they are working on that um, and and giving or get working on costs for the scope. Um, EEI uh, also here tonight is is also working on the ESSER funding of the of this project, which entails uh, the, mostly the mechanical work over there as well as some other pieces of the pie. And so I wanted to take tonight and kind of share um, the the elements that. Um, 
could be part of the project. We're still working on uh, finalizing how the pieces will fit, the pieces of the pie will fit into the budget and make sure that um, the parts are necessary. Uh, the schematic design kind of pulled a, a bunch of stuff together of, of, of uh, items that, that people had expressed interest in having in the school. Um, and then we're going to uh, finesse that and, and work toward that construction document set uh, early, early next year so that construction uh, ideally can begin uh, after school lets out or, or, or possibly even a little bit earlier, depending on, on how that works uh, with the, f the t total scheduling of it with, with Harvey and, and EEI. So, so <clears throat> this, um, I, I kind of caveat that saying that that, that way because these, um, what I present today may not be the final project, but these are the things that we're, we're looking at. And um, so I just wanted to kind of go through those elements and, and share. So, <clears throat> excuse me, this one here is Birch Hill. Uh, and the schools are, we kind of call them sister schools, they're mirrors of each other, uh, nearly identical, there are differences, uh, one's on a hill, one's not, uh, and, <laughs> and, and we joked as we were walking around them, because you get confused at which school you're in, you have to kind of pay attention to the colors in there, because uh, they have different colors, uh, but, but there is, there is some, some nuanced differences, um, certainly the uh, amount of space being utilized uh, it varies a little bit because of just where they are in the in the uh, in the city, um, but so I'll I'll, re I'll go through Birch Hill a little more detail, and then Main Dunstable will be able to go kind of cursory a little bit more because it's it's uh, similar scopes. So item A uh, off to the right of that plan uh, is where the main entrance is on Birch Hill. Uh, looking at doing some uh, entry upgrades there, uh, kind of uh, freshening up that main entry. I do have some photos later on that kind of show some of the thoughts that we're having initially here. Um, maybe a guidance office suite where B is. Uh, they don't really have a kind of a, an office uh, area for guidance right now, so looking at that and B. Um, this is, these are open concept schools, so there's really no demising partitions between classrooms. Um, there, there is, they do have them you know, set up with casework that kind of divides the spaces, but, but not, not an ideal situation for, um, you know, no, noise and things like that. Uh, even teaching walls and stuff is a little bit difficult in that setting. So one, one of the driving factors has been that, um, well, and mechanically, it's not, it's not a great setting. But so one of these driving factors um, is to separate those spaces and create walls and doors. Um, gives you improved security, gives you better control of, of ventilation, uh, acoustics. Uh, you know, a lot, lots of factors why, why the separated space would be there. So C is kind of just highlighting the whole south side of that image, uh, where there's a lot of green uh, that, that's uh, separating those spaces up. I, I should say, as we're looking at the colors there, the blue is, is areas that kind of received uh, minor renovation areas. Uh, the, the green are the core, the, the more major renovation, renovated type areas, and the, and the purple are proposed potential um, additions that, that might be necessary uh, for mechanicals or whatnot, depend, depending on what we determine the final scopes are. So those are things that we're kind of exploring right now. Uh, so D is mechanical rooms. Uh, that with the uh, in introduction of the ESSER uh, fun funding, um, the uh, EEI scope of things is looking at uh, needing some mechanical rooms to do their work. Um, and so we're looking at putting some mechanical rooms in the lower level of this space. Um, a, a potentially a performance stage is something that's kind of gone back and forth a little bit. So we have a, that up on the purple left side off the end of the gym. Uh, updated casework, uh, natural light, bringing some natural light into some of these areas of the school. There's these areas they call fish bowls in the middle of the school where, where we're proposing middle, um, excuse me, the mechanical rooms. Uh, but maybe providing some natural light into those spaces as well as a gym that doesn't have any uh, outside uh, light right now. Uh, finish, finishes throughout, painting, flooring, ceilings, um, mechanical and up, electrical upgrades are actually part of the ESSER funding, but, but just noting that for you folks that, that that work would be partaking in this school. And discussion potentially of some kitchen expansion. Um, not sure where that lands, but there was a, a kind of a late discussion on that, so we're kind of exploring what the necessity of that will be as well. 
And this is so that the classroom side of the building has a, it's kind of a split level. The main level that kind of disappeared here in, in the image um, is the, the public side. We kind of been referring to it at the middle, the new middle school, the Brian McCarthy Middle School. Um, so that's kind of the public side. And the classroom wing of these is a split level. So you kind of go down a level to the, this wing or up, up the other way. So this is the lower level of that classroom wing. Same, same uh, pieces there. I just kind of cleared out some of the ones that don't, aren't, um, aren't part of the uh, classroom wing. So the image is a little, well, I mean, that's the, that's the point. So as I say, it's a little dark up on the existing, existing uh, entry there, Birch Hill. Um, and so that, that is what we were exploring. Is it's not, it, does, it doesn't feel like a, a, a super inviting space. Um, it's, it's dark. Uh, and so we were looking at ways to uh, brighten it up and, and bring, bring some uh, excitement to that entrance. So bringing in some aluminum paneling, uh, maybe a little more storefront at the front there. Uh, just kind of creating an inviting space. And in addition to the scopes that I talked about, we're exploring um, the windows and doors that may or may not need to be replaced. Uh, some of it's some of the windows. Uh, actually, I was walking by today and taking a peek at some of them. They're you know from 1970s vintage. They're steel uh, and and are are suffering some some rust uh, issues. So likely those will have to be replaced. Uh, the roof, exploring the roof um, replacement and, and the necessity of that and, and what that, that will entail. And actually, I should note that the, um, the presentation that was shared uh, virtually earlier, this, this presentation had the, the roof image uh, mixed up. So I've fixed it for this presentation up here on screen, but it may look different if you had one. Um, on the PDF version. So I just had them backwards. Uh, other, other pieces, um, I wanted to just kind of show what some of those spaces look like. Um, you have the uh, outside of the gym to the left, uh, top left, um, and then bottom left is the cafeteria area. Um, those are the areas that we would be exploring uh, potential additions uh, if needed. Um, and then the gymnasium top right, uh, you can see there's no, no natural light coming into that space, so exploring some options there. Uh, and then the cafeteria on the bottom right uh, inside that space, uh, just kind of sharing what that looks like. Uh, existing kitchen, um, some of the elements that are being explored are, are dishwashing. Right now they have a three-bay sink and looking at possible ways to include a dishwasher in that space. Um, you can see at the top is the kind of the outside of the kitchen and the, the bottom is, is the inside the space itself. That's actually a cooking hood that you're looking at. Um, just kind of want to get a flavor of what, what the spaces are. And these are the, uh, the fishbowl classrooms uh, inside. Uh -huh. um, it, it's hard to tell in the image, but you can see that there's like some colorful casework on the bottom image. That's actually looking into the corridor. Um, so that it's wide open to that corridor space going through. Um, so again, you could see if kids were traveling and there was still teaching going on, how that could be a, be a challenge. So both images are of the same classroom, just different directions inside that classroom. Actually, the one on the top, I think, faces another classroom. So you could see that classroom right through there. Mm -hmm. And the left image here is looking down the corridor. Um, exploring what, what work might be in there is potentially um, some, some uh, new, new casework uh, for, for storage cubbies, for kindergarten, um, and, the, and the right image is like an art room, or actually that's in a classroom, excuse me, uh, casework that's, you know, from I think it's probably 19, that one's probably the 92 edition vintage on the right, um, so. so. That was Birch Hill. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, Maine Dunstable is, is similar but opposite. Um, this one um, does have additional students, and so we're exploring, um, you know, making sure that we have the right amount of, of capacity for students there. So that you will notice there is a, another purple addition uh, on the bottom right. Uh, we wanted to make sure we capture that cost, but we are analyzing uh, the full depth of, of necessity of it. Same thing there, just with that additional additional addition there for uh, possible need.
We wanted to, um, on the, again, this is early concept, but we, we're looking at exploring that main entry. And so Main Dunstable uh, actually kind of has, you're coming, Birch Hill, you're coming kind of up a hill. Mm -hmm. And so what we proposed is we wanted the entrance to be similar. Right now, they're, they're pretty identical with different text, uh, different color. Mm -hmm. um, but we wanted to explore keeping them um, Simil you know, similar, uh, we didn't want to make them completely different because they, they are the sister schools as we call them. Um, but, but we wanted to have some, some difference and kind of have the different feel. And so on the Birch Hill one, as you're coming up the hill, we kept that, that uh, canopy flat um, because you're kind of looking underneath it as you're arriving to the school. This one, you're kind of coming in almost flat, maybe a little bit above, um, maybe more so flat, I guess. And so we wanted to open that up a little bit. So we're proposing actually pulling that canopy up a little bit and making it feel, you know, give a similar feel as you're approaching the building. Opposite hand, again, the school's opposite hand. Uh, but again, it's similar in nature, but, but a little bit different. And again, you know, windows, roof, interior of the space of the gymnasium, cafeteria, very similar, opposite end. The uh, kitchen is similar. This one actually has an outdoor cooler freezer. So you can see on the top image, there's a roof structure, a wooden roof structure with, uh, with uh, metal roofing um, that's protecting the area where the, the outside cooler freezer is. All right. Um, Just I almost like I should pause for a moment and, yeah. uh, and see if <clears throat> I covered a lot of material very fast. Um, so, so, but I did, I, so I'm going to open it up for questions on, on those, those spaces. All right, I have Alder Woman Timmons. I thank you. Um, <coughs> um, thank you for the presentation. It was really good. Um, did we lose any spaces when you, when you're going to add those walls? The, for the, for the um, classrooms. For the classrooms, no. And we're actually trying to, we're trying to right size those rooms a little bit too. Right. Um, so we're adjusting things, maybe taking some storage out of some area and moving it to a different area of the building. Um, we do take up space with the mechanical rooms in this layout, um, but there are rooms that are uh, being utilized differently than, than they, than, they're, they're bigger spaces than what they may need for some spaces and not for others. So. We're moving spaces around. At Maine Dunstable, as an example, it is the reason that we are proposing we may need additional classrooms because those mechanical rooms do take up a significant portion. And that school um, has more students than Birch Hill. Birch Hill has lesser students. Um, and we're still keeping the same amount of spaces, but maybe right-sizing some of those rooms in the other direction where you may have two students in a very large room and, and really it's not necessary. So. Keeping the options open, we've, we've, I didn't say this at the beginning and I should have, we've been meeting with the principal, we've had several meetings with both principals, um, together and separate, uh, talking about program. We've walked the school with them on at least one occasion, probably two. Uh, we've had conversations with the kitchen director, um, as well as the, I'm not sure what the position of the, the lady that was um, under, kind of, I don't say under the director, but she was working with the, the director, had meetings with her, um, we've had uh, a meeting with the uh, superintendent and having some discuss early discussions. Um, so kind of programming all those spaces, talking about them, making sure they're the right size. Um, so yes, spaces are changing, but we're trying to right size the classrooms. Um, I know right now the, like this kindergarten, there's four kindergarten in Maine Dunstable, uh -huh. and some of those are in like a 750 square foot room. They should be closer to 1,000. Um, adding some, potentially adding restrooms to some of those spaces. We're looking at doing that as well. I didn't capture all that in this discussion. It's still early. We're, we're trying to make sure we're, we're getting it done right. Uh, but we got to explore that, weighing it with the budget and see what is those uh, parts and pieces that fit best. And can I have one follow-up question? Sure. Follow -up okay, question. thank you. Um, there's a up, there's going to be an uptick because War II is getting a new, um, some new developments new housing, and kids are going to probably be in those housing. Do we consider that? Are we considering that maybe five years from now, the school may be too small? That's been discussed. Um, not, it's not a decision that's done by Harriman, so to speak, mm -hmm. but it has been talked about uh, amongst, amongst uh, the principals, the superintendent, uh, and others. So. 
I'll address part of that. It's uh, there are other classrooms, even in Ward Two, mm -hmm. and other schools that have empty classrooms, <clears throat> and there'll be a few more when some more of the kids, are preschool, are all moved to Franklin Street. So, and it's going to be up to the Board of Ed to do that redistricting citywide <laughs> to fit the kids into the, the right schools. And uh, we think we have enough space, but, you know, for the number of students we have and any, any reasonable growth. So the, the other thing I want to state on this, well, I'll get at Alden Clee's question first. Um, actually, you, you addressed one of the questions that I had, but before I, I do that one, what is it you mentioned additional lighting Sorry, thank you very much. I, I heard this angel speaking to me. Yes. <laughs> well, I didn't want to say the other thing, so anyway. Um, you had mentioned additional lighting in both schools, and you were talking about it, that, that center area where, and, and the difficulty of it. What are some of the ideas for it? I mean, I'm not going to hold your feet to the fire, but I look at a space that, and these brick walls that have no windows or anything, so how do you get additional lighting? Great, great question. So. The lower level, those fish bowls are, are trying to be utilized for mechanical spaces. Those mechanical rooms I spoke about um, would be in those fish bowl areas. So now you don't need to bring natural light to those spaces. Um, so that's the first floor. And the first floor is the, the harder of those areas. Um, this, the second floor, and, and, and the mechanical room doesn't take that whole fishbowl area, so things like conference rooms, uh, storage closets, things like that are, are good things for inside those fishbowl areas because you don't need to bring a lot of natural light to those spaces. They're used very short periods of the time. The natural light really should be in the classrooms where kids are there all day long. Um, so the second floor, um, there is a shaft way that is needed for those mechanical rooms, so that, that takes a portion of it. Um, and then some of those other rooms are teachers' rooms, um, I'm trying to think of all the different spaces I probably could try to read. Uh, you know, maybe a, maybe a, a breakout room, a conference room, uh, all these little spaces to the in type. So to inside of those spaces would be utilizing those fishbowl areas. But we still want to bring some natural light into that area so that you could borrow light from it. You might have a small light beside it to bring some lights into a conference room as an example. And so we are proposing putting skylights in the, in the, the hub uh, area uh, potentially in the corridor hub, like where it kind of intersects, that becomes a challenge mechanically. So we got to explore <clears throat> that as well. Uh, usually, that's where the mechanicals go. So skylights. Um, I think on like Penichuk, uh and fairgrounds, we utilize solar tubes. So they're called solar tubes. Um, so those are little tiny kind of yep. round skylights that bring down light into a natural lens that brings mm -hmm. natural light in. So those are other options we, we're going to explore. There's not as many rooms, though, if we use the mechanicals and, and uh, guidance, I mean, not guidance, uh, conference rooms and stuff in those spaces. They don't need as much light as a, as a room that uh, utilizes, it needs light day, all day because students are in them all day. So we push those major classrooms to the outside where they may not be right now. Okay, thank you. So it's just kind of readjusting the classrooms and, and some of the possible solar lighting. Yeah. And the other question I had, and um, uh, Alderman Dowd uh, brought that up. I said, um, is there a um, agenda soon for redistricting? Because we are building schools, and I will be honest with you, I hear from constituents, and I'm sure so do you, we're building schools, we're doing this, and we don't know how many each school needs. I love the fact that we split the middle schools really evenly, and, and we, we, spread it, we spread those three schools amongst the city. I think that was wonderful. It was a perfect plan. It just happenstance worked out that way. We have middle schools and elementary schools kind of all over the place, but are we, is there anything on the agenda soon for any kind of redistricting, putting you in the hot seat? Thank you. It's an ongoing discussion right now. Um, I think at the superintendent's level, it's figuring out what's the best way to address how to redistrict, um, you know, keeping in mind equity and location mm -hmm. um, and you know making sure that the the needs of the students and the teachers are being met so I think we're at the big part of the funnel right now which is trying to figure out how we're going to start narrowing it down um, but it's certainly um, we're coming up with an agenda I obviously am pushing for for dates and time so that we know what we're working towards so follow up I'm sorry a follow up for a comment thank you um, the I really do think it's good because we're going to be putting more and more money into these schools. And some people are saying, well, if we redistrict, we will close schools. I don't think that's yeah. the case ever. Um, but I think we need to show the public that we're being very conscientious. And even here in this discussion, 
we're adding classrooms, we're doing this, you know, mm -hmm. um, but do we need to? And they're gonna be getting to the design phase. And I know you can't possibly get that done before this, it's gonna take a long time, but I think we do really need to move on it. And I don't mean to put pressure on you, but uh, I, think that, I think the public would feel- no pressure. I feel the public would feel better about it. I know, um, I tell them, I can't do it, it's, it's on your plate, so. Yeah, and I mean, if we can make each school, you know, have have kind of a base foundation, you know, a, amongst the city, then you don't have pockets of people trying to get into certain schools because they're all they're all similar across the board. Mm -hmm. um, so I think when we're building these schools and we're putting in the classrooms that reflect other uh, the other schools, we're creating even just that physical equity. So whether or not we're going to have more or less students, at least we're, we're going to have the similarities across the board. Thank you for that consideration. I think that's yeah. a great idea. Yes, Ms. Olympia. Um, I had a question about the roofs. Um, if um, if you replace the roofs, um, well, first, like, I was wondering what kind of shape they are in now. And then if you do replace them, will you put skylights on them? And if you do, will that be an, um, like a savings to the district? Uh, um, what did I say? <coughs> oh, I meant, I'm, I'm sorry. I meant solar. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> let, me, let me address a couple things. One, the, the major intent of this project is to separate the two schools into rooms and put HIVAC in there to control the airflow and also to improve the security aspect of these schools. So uh, I'm the Scrooge in the audience because mm -hmm. I'm responsible for cost and schedule. As, as I'm sure that our contractors know all too well. So we are, you know, uh, Jamie said he's talked to the principals. Every time you talk to the principals, you know, they'd like to, they want their schools to have everything that they've been missing or they'd like, or so they tend to ask for the world. We're constrained by the budget. And the biggest part of the constraint is the ESSER funds. Um, we can only do so much with the money we have. So we're in the process of doing value engineering to look at all the things that Jamie had pointed out and see what can be done for the funding we have. The only way that can change is if the school department, the Board of Ed, gave us more ESSER funds or we added to the current bond. So um, <clears throat> EEI is basically handling the HIVAC portion of, of the project. Which, and, and of course, the other thing, that part of it is, this was originally, I think, 2012 when they did the original study? Correct. And prices have gone up a tad, <laughs> as you can well imagine. So we're, 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 we're fighting that right now. So as I said, we've had one major meeting, we're having others, uh, and we'll be in a better position maybe by the next meeting to, hopefully as far as Jamie's concerned, because schedule on these two schools is also very tight. Uh, they, and uh, <clears throat> so we'll be back with what can actually be done for the funding. And if people have desires beyond that, particularly if it's in the HIVAC area, or, or then, then it will be up to the Board of Ed to turn loose more ESSER funds. <clears throat> the, the other part of this is that, uh, um, again, a tight schedule. We can only do so much so fast with the summer you know, and uh, can't really work per se with the kids in the school, although we are doing what we've done with all the other elementary schools and turning the gymnasiums into classrooms and uh, is even a possibility of, do of, uh, you want to touch on that? Yeah, if, if you don't mind, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, all the doubts right, and th there is a tight, Tight schedule, and what's driving that that tight schedule uh, on this particular on these particular projects is, in fact, um, the ESSER funding and um, utilizing that that funding uh, in a timely manner where it gets um, cut off. Uh, there's a there's a there's a deadline to use that money, and, and, and Mr. David here might be able to help me. I think it's September of 24. Those funds need to be used currently. There is a hope uh, out there that maybe there's uh, an extension to that, uh, but you know we don't we don't want to rely on hope. Uh, so we're we're trying to design this school and make sure that we're utilizing that money because that's a big chunk of money for this school and it's really needed 
um, with, you know, with these schools, especially where you're, you're going from a open concept school, which already needs some, some care in that area as it stands, but then creating these segmented rooms. Now you've got to actually provide ventilation to each one of those rooms and new heat and all that stuff. So, and, and air conditioning. Uh, so, uh, now is the time to do that. And so that's, Alderman Dow suggested that's, that's the the primary drive on that, and that's the that's the reason behind that. That and security, uh, ven ventilation, security, um, and uh, making the appropriate spaces for these teaching of the students. There are some others niceties, and the, the meetings that we're having with the with the all the players, the key players, you know, kitchen director and principals and all that stuff. They they're giving us ideas and things that the, that are nice to have, and, and maybe some of its necessity. Um, and so what we wanted to, exp for the schematic design, that's why I'm presenting this tonight, is this is the big picture. This would be really great if we could do all this stuff. Some of it may not be necessary, not necessary, but maybe not be able to be done because the budgets are tight and, and, and escalation has occurred and, and, and if, you know, prices of things continue to grow. Maybe the time frame will provide some constraints on some of it. Um, but all of that is, is keeping in mind the, the students and the staff's, uh, you know, necessary elements and ventilation and security, those are always really high on that. Um, you know, you want to want to make sure those are those are top of the line for, for these students. So we're working with that. We're, we're going to come up with the best plan. Uh, we'll continue to present, um, but we are, do have to do this in a pretty uh, vigorous schedule to make sure that SR funding can be utilized and, and, and really contribute to this school where it needs to be. So. As far as the extension of the ESSER funds, right now, the main players from Washington, for some unknown reason, are here in New Hampshire. And, <laughs> and, and they want to talk to anybody that, they, you know, that, that wants to talk to them. So uh, I, don't, I think I've met Annie Custer more times in the last couple of months than, than the rest of the time she was in office. So now's the time we can capture them and talk to them, and that's what we're doing to try and, you know, and uh, uh, we'll see what we can do about getting it extended. Uh, and I think right now we're also thinking that as long as we have the funds committed, but we haven't got that written in blood yet. But that that's one thing that will help as well. Yes. Yeah, uh, it was, I think she's well, the lamp Yeah, I was just wondering, um, ideally, when would you like to start doing this? Is it as soon as school lets out, or is it some other time frame? Absolutely, uh, and 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 we're trying to help Jamie get the the design and everything down by before January, right? Uh, yeah, we'd like to ideally to make this this project fall in alignment. Construction documents should be out to Harvey uh, in January, so that they can price start their process uh, of of procuring materials and all that, you know, they're going to have to bring it to the board for the JSSBC to approve all those, their contracts, uh, and then start construction. Ideally, and, and I mean, June is when it's going to probably happen, but it, even before then would be, that needs to be explored by Harvey, um, when they can get in there and not interfere with school. <laughs> but, the, you know, there's, there's, I also want to, there's a lot to talk about here on this, but we, they are exploring with the superintendent's, uh, uh, in, in the equation, just exploring uh, possibly utilizing uh, portables elsewhere in the district for this, for swing space to start construction so they can put students in some of these other, these portables potentially for a short bit. So those are, that option is being explored. Um, th there's a lot happening in a very, you know, broad sense. Um, and so, yes, I, I, I guess to answer your question, yes, quick, quickly in that sense. Uh, so we, we need to kind of refine scopes. Doesn't mean things can't be adjusted later. Um, but but uh, it, January is when we're trying to shoot for construction documents. A and on top of that, sorry, one, one more element. Um, as I think everybody in this room has seen, uh, procurement of materials is a challenge. And so... Uh, mechanically uh, and electrically in particular, those elements uh, have a very long lead time right now, and, and that hasn't diminished since we, we, we kind of got into the, the heat of the Brian McCarthy Middle School. Um, so we know that th some of those elements, switch gear and, and transformers can take uh, the, you know, 18 to months to two years. So working with that right now, it's causing, uh, I know, Mike, I'm kind of stealing your thunder here, but <laughs> some, some, some of that stuff needs to be decided quick. So figuring out what, how much, how far that ESSER funding is going to go 
quickly so that they can start actually ordering materials before the, the full building design is completed. We, we're, we're accounting for what they need uh, is really important too. So unfortunately, it's just kind of the world we live in right now. It's not, it's, it does, I don't uh, spend much joy in, <laughs> in doing things at, at this speed, but, it, but we will do it well and we will do it uh, thoughtfully um, and, and smartly, so. <clears throat> I think you kind of answered it, but I just want some, some clarification because I was worried about losing my question, so I wasn't listening fully. <laughs> Do we have to have the money promised for the ESSER funds or paid up by the 24th? Like That's what we're trying to get resolved with. Okay. Uh, through Mr. Donovan. Um, and we don't have a final answer on that, but we should have it, or we better have it by the next meeting. And, and um, um, you know, there's, uh, I believe this is all lesser three funds, right, Sean? Mm-hmm. So um, we'll have more on that as, as we go. Mike, did you want to add anything about these two schools? Well, not to put a target on you. But <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I think Jamie covered it uh, pretty well. The, I guess the only just high-level thing is um, currently, um, the schools aren't ventilated and, and dehumidified to the standard that um, the district has used in this building and many of the other uh, construction projects. So the, H, the HVAC system that we're looking at would um, bring in the filtration to the level that's recommended by the state for, um, for COVID and it would provide dehumidification to the classrooms. Okay. Any other questions on Maine Dunstable Birch Hill? I'm sure we have more. Mrs. Raymond is happy. It's right there next door. <laughs> Jamie, you want to continue on? I, I will, and I will actually follow up to a question that was asked about solar uh, oh, yeah. and the roof. Um, the intent would be, we're, we're exploring this right now, right? But the intent would be to, you know, money was no object. First of all, the roof, the roof is in need of repair. I think it, it's, it's, it's at its life's expectancy. Correct. Um, they, so the intent would be to replace them, I think, and we maybe would explore the R values there uh, in an ideal situation. As, and, and then I think Nashua's drive or Nashua school district's drive or who, who, Nashua in general, I think, is drive is to do solar on schools. And I don't know that it's being talked about. It's not, it's something that is done later, but th those things are being explored. So to answer your question, I think Possibly yes, that's that would be the intent. If it's possible, we'll explore putting solar on there. I've heard good things about solar. <laughs> Listen to Dory Brown the other night. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of good things with solar. Um, okay. All right, Pen Penichuk, um That one's ongoing. I, I got an opportunity to swing by there today, even though I was down uh, to for the Brian McCarthy project. Um, but uh, it's going very well. Uh, it looks good. Um, few few submittals and RFIs, but it's 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 very. Uh, those are very uh, very uh, spread out. There's not there's not a lot happening in that realm because they they know the drive. They know what they're doing. They're kind of closing things up. The library edition uh, is, is well. That's Ken Ken's thunder. I won't I won't steal all of this thunder. So that, it's going very well. It looks good. Um, we are uh, reviewing a few additional requests that have come up on maybe some door replacements. Uh, some, some of the older doors might need to be uh, swapped out, uh, ones that weren't part of the original project. Um, the air, we've, we've talked, uh, I think, a few times now about the air conditioning project uh, and, and some of the uh, uh, scopes that, that weren't captured originally in the project that, that pr our proposal was accepted. We've been doing the design. Um, I expect that early next week the construction documents will be issued for Harvey to begin pricing the that portion of the project so um, that's looking to be next week um, and then uh, we were requested to look at a few uh, additional safety uh, elements uh, for the building from the safety and security director and so we're exploring some of those um, those ones are, are, are uh, are look, being looked at, but not quite up to uh, be ready to be processed uh, by Harvey. So things like bollards and protection at doors and things like that. So just to elaborate, and, and actually the door replacements above are part of that same equation. 
the Brian S. McCarthy Middle School? Yes. I, I'm, I'm absolutely. I'm, I'm sorry. I just, <clears throat> I just wanted to say that the superintendent was kind enough to take us on a tour of the three existing middle schools about a week and a half ago, almost two weeks ago. And um, it was amazing. I mean, being at Fairgrounds first and then Elm Street and then finishing at Penichock, um, the ventilations <laughs> in the buildings that have been renovated as compared to Elm Street was just absolutely outstanding. And, and the schools, just the two schools that have been renovated look wonderful. And, and the students looked happy. And I, it just was, um, it was kind of in stark contrast to the school that we're gonna be replacing with the Brian McCarthy yeah, School. Um, and I just wanted kudos to this whole group who's been working for years to do that. Um, because I think I'm speaking for all of us, we were really impressed. Great, great. Yeah. A couple great. changes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so back to the Brian S. McCarthy Middle School. So I was also there today, I got up on the roof. Uh, and I uh, spoke to Harvey superintendent and said, if you ever make me go up uh, those metal st <laughs> scary, scary metal scary st stairs again. Uh, no, but uh, it was great, be beautiful up there. Uh, coming along quite well. Uh, it's un unbelievable uh, how much work has happened. Uh, the steel, the roof's going on that, that uh, classroom addition, the, the T there. Again, Ken will share some of that, but uh, we're, we're reviewing uh, some middles and RFIs. Th those are still, uh, heavily active, uh, the, very uh, lot of lot of progress, but a uh, lot of lot of stuff to review um, because of the amount of work that's happening over there. Um, we are again at this particular school reviewing uh, some additional safety safety security items like the bollards and 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 some other requests uh, from safety and security directors. We're reviewing those, um, getting out some um, proposal requests to, to Harvey to kind of price those and look at those. Um, we uh, are looking at the playground space, which happens at the lower level, kind of on the opposite side of that left side of that building in that image. Um, there's a playground area. And uh, looking, uh, we actually have a meeting, uh, I think it's next week with the uh, playground people. We've had meetings with uh, Marsha Bagley, the, the SPED director, uh, about that space. Uh, and so we're starting to starting to dive into that one to see what, what type of, uh, play equipment should be in that space and what that space uh, should be laid out as. Uh, so that's ongoing. Uh, we've had uh, actually a few meetings with, with the, the athletics director about uh, the equipment that's needed for uh, the, this particular school outside. Um, so we're doing some designs on you know, bleacher layer. It's, it, most of the, the play fields have already been designed, but it's just kind of what equipment needs to be here at this school because it, you know, Penichuk and Fairgrounds, you have that equipment, but Elm Street doesn't have those, a lot of that equipment. So a lot of new equipment will have to be purchased for this particular school. So we're reviewing that with, with the, uh, Ms. Jing Jingris, uh, the athletic director, make sure we get the right pieces and parts and get that on at the school. So I know Har Harvey's been heavily involved with that as well. So, um, and then um, the, the, there's been a, Ongoing discussion about the graphics at the overhead coiling doors at that kitchen. Um, I know that uh, Mr. Smith, I believe, has a proposal tonight about uh, s some uh, graphic design uh, designer looking at that and coming up with a really nice uh, feature there. Uh, there was some early discussions about having the, the school logo there and and um, I may have played a little bit in saying, I think this is a little more than just a, a graphic there. I mean, just a, a, an image of the school graphic that's gonna be in the court of the gymnasium. Um, and so w this is gonna be your, your first, I think we, we, we've touched on this several times in these meetings. So th anyways, that's, that's being out there. And I think, like I said, Mr. Smith's gonna propose something today uh, on that. By the way, that before you leave that picture, when you're building a school like this, there's a lot of things that have to be thought of in advance so it doesn't cost more later like running electric lines and, and water lines to the athletic fields they all have to go underneath that parking lot which we don't want to dig up again so uh -huh. and I'm not gonna steal any of Harvey's thunder but uh, we had to think of all of that there's a lot of things that have to be thought about early on so that you don't have to go back and spend money you didn't have to spend again that's the thing I watch for yes I was just, so um, the goal, are there goalposts in the picture? The, uh, 
Not for football, soccer, oh, okay. like soccer nets. Not, fo- it's no not football. a football. No, not I just was wondering if the Elks or somebody was going to be, because I know that middle school football is done. But. Yeah, we're trying to get, uh, well, Mr. Smith is trying to get discussion with the park rec guys. Uh, we have goalposts at Fairgrounds and Penichuk, but they're a maintenance nightmare, and they may be taking them out because there is no middle school football. And uh, the, the kids that do the football at Penichuk do it on the upper field. So it's not, on, it's not our property, but the property, we just have u- use of it. So. If, if I could, I've had that discussion with Park and Rec, with the athletic director, um, both school principals, and a consensus is to take down the goalposts at the two middle schools. So we're, <coughs> when we get the chance, those will come down. Because those fields are primarily soccer. Right. So that's not a goalpost. That's all. No. No <laughs> <laughs> goal. Um, the uh, yeah, at, at this school, there's a basketball court, uh, softball field, baseball field, uh, track, soccer, and then the uh, complements that go with track and field. So. Just like Elm Street. <laughs> <laughs> kidding. Kidding. <laughs> um, the, the other element, actually, I appreciated that pause. I, f- I forgot I was going to mention today that um, we are uh, also looking at the si- exterior signage around the school um, and on the school. Um, so the and I, I don't have anything to visually share, but I'll, I'll verbally share that um, the, the there's a sign at the ac- straight ahead in that image, all the way down. You go down that access road, you're going to run into Buck Meadow. And at the end of Buck Meadow, the, I mean, excuse me, at the end of that access road, the there'll be a Tony sign Drive. that says uh, Brian S. McCarthy Middle School. And as you drive up that access drive and you approach the site, um, again, we're kind of, Alderman Dowd, I think, was pointing with the green or just up a little bit right at the main entrance. There'll be another uh, site sign that says uh, Brian S. McCarthy Middle School. And that will have a LED uh, display on it so you can share information. Mm. As you come around to the main entry, uh, as you as you enter in the school, there'll be a, um, a sign on the building that says Brian S. McCarthy Middle School, and you go inside um, the um, gymnasium. Uh, it was discussed, I should say, uh, McCarthy Mustangs. Um, so I want to make sure I shared that. I know that there's been discussions with uh, the school district as well as uh, the the McCarthy family about that, and so I just want to share that with with the group here and make sure that everybody knew that that was going to be what was on the signage uh, around the school. So maybe it's not a question, but I just want to share. So all right, and as we go uh, into, I don't have anything to share on on um, on uh, fairgrounds. That uh, you know, school is about done. <laughs> Harvey's got a little more to do, but I think they're just about there. Um, on 55 Franklin Street, again, we're reviewing submittals and RFIs, uh, looking at scheduling on that one. I know that uh, we've had a meeting today with, with Harvey and, and uh, Nashua, Nashua School District on, um, on trying to look at that schedule and make sure that continues through and is falling in alignment with, with the, the phasing of students coming in at different areas. Um, so that continues. Um, there's been a discussion about kitchen. Uh, there's no design work that's happened there necessarily. I know that, well, I, I say that, but the, the kitchen um, uh, vendor has been looking at potential equipment for there. Uh, again, it's just a bit of exploration discussion. I don't, I don't know if there's any beneficial uh, decision on that one yet. Um, and then some minor interior space adjustments have been, are being reviewed, but r- really minor, minor uh, design work, so to speak, over, over there currently. Alderman Kling. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Franklin Street's in my in my ward, um, and I truthfully I get a lot of complaints about things that are happening there and the construction and so on. And Alderman Dowd has to listen to my my complaints. I get a complaint, he gets a complaint. Um, uh, and it doesn't matter if it's a Saturday, Sunday, whatever. He gets my complaint. Um, the the my basic question first off are we on schedule to really open do you believe after thanksgiving that the students will be coming in i don't know if i should put that to you to the board of ed or or so on are we going to have more of a delay yes it will 
do we know when so I can let my constituents know? I mean, the, the truth is that the signs are going to be going up, but one of the signs that are going up is no parking during school hours. Um, normal school hours are between whatever, you know, I'll say nine to six or something. I, I know those aren't the school hours. Um, but having said that, once those signs go up, if they're not using the school, they're under the impression that they can park there. But so I would like to get kind of a, a feel as to when the school is really going to be utilized. I, I get comments that we're going to have a soft opening at this date, but we're going to really try to open after Thanksgiving. Um, and I know you guys are working really hard. That's why there's been work on weekends and early mornings and, and so on. But um, the neighbors that are there are really getting frustrated, especially the ones on Winter Street. They get the most of the noise and the most of the, everything that's happening, including the trash. If the, if the dumpsters, we get a good wind, it, it blows the stuff out of the dumpsters. So um, I think my complaining to Alderman Dowd is kind of running into my complaining here is what can we do better? When do we think we'll have a schedule just so these people know what's going on? I think they feel like they're lost. It's happening around them and they don't know what's happening. So Who wants to address? Anybody want to? John, uh, do you want to? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, so the schedule is, and we have several contractors working on it, but the uh, we, we've met on this yesterday we're definitely opening on the 28th of november that's when all the preschools that were going there last year will be back there okay. along with a couple of preschool classrooms from birch hill along with the brentwood program so they'll all be there on november 28th okay so they're that is a still a definite right after thanksgiving definite, yes. it's still the it's still the definite. everything's working towards that all the mechanical Systems are in place. They're doing. They're fine-tuning things. Uh, it's primarily EI. Harvey is working on on everything they need to do. Uh, they're we're looking at ways to actually expedite some other issues in the basement to move that ahead. But definitely the 28th is looking very, very, very good. Perfect. Thank you. And one so just a quick follow-up, if I may. Yeah. Um, do do we, will the construction continue? I mean the the mass amount of construction that's happening now, will that continue mm -hmm. once they're back in school? I kind of got that impression it's going through the summer, but. We're, we're having that discussion on what we can do <laughs> to speed things up for next summer, because there's, there's an awful lot of work planned next summer. Um, we literally just talked about this morning. Yeah. Um, and, and we gave uh, Harvey some ideas on how we might, how things might progress. They need to go back and figure out the schedule. But I, I, I think, that it's doable so that we can have everybody in school at the beginning of the next school year. But Harvey still needs to figure it out. We, we need to look at the budget, we need to look at the schedule. In the meantime, par part of getting there is potentially do some work during the school year. So for example, uh, the vast majority of the preschool program is gonna be on the second floor. Uh, there'll be minimal elements on the first floor. I don't believe there's going to be 18 students at all on the first floor. There may be some administrators. That's it. So if we can be doing some of the construction work on the first floor, that's not noisy. We can't do any, <laughs> any noise while school's in session. But before school starts, after school ends, uh, weekends, uh, that sort of thing. School vacation breaks, we can really make some hay. Uh, we go to town with the noise. Um, We've talked, literally, we've just talked this morning about, okay, gee, we have a, we have a whole month we can still make noise with. You know, can we, <laughs> what, what can we do on the first floor? In the meantime, they're, they're making a great headway in the basement, and we didn't expect that that to occur. First of all, we didn't expect to have all this extra time during the school year already. So they've already put up, uh, all, all the studs are up, the, the sheet rocks are going to go up shortly, all the ductwork is already in place, uh, those mechanicals are going to be there. So... I expect the basements, you correct me if I'm wrong, maybe I'm being a little over opti optimistic, by end of this calendar year, the basement's gonna be pretty much done, which was way ahead of our schedule. Yes. So th that by itself provides swing space. So as we're working on the first floor, uh, other parts of the building, that maybe some people can go down there. Um, well, the linchpin, the elephant in the room is really what do we do with the third floor next summer? And that's what we're talking about, schedule and, and alternatives to uh, what we've planned all along. So in fairness, uh, Misco just got all this information yesterday and is working on what can we do in the time frames allocated. So 
Uh, we don't have that answer yet, I don't think. <laughs> so, one more follow up? Yes, please. Thank you. Um, I'm not going to address the, the the actual complaints that I've I've received from constituents. I've given them to they've heard. Alderman Dowd, and I know they've they've been put towards you. So I'm not going to publicly discuss those. But if we can make sure that it doesn't happen, I truly truly appreciate it. And thank you so much. I know you guys are working really hard. I'm not trying to be, but it, it, it is bothersome at times for them. So thank you. Yeah, the other thing that's not part of any of the contractors, it's Sean and I, is the uh, working with DPW. We're anticipating, uh, I've talked to Dan Hudson a couple times, city engineer, and we should be getting the drawings to of the markings on the street from him to review. The signs have already been ordered by DPW, and there will be a day in the near future. You'll have an advance warning. And, and we'll be shutting down all the streets so the guys painting the, the new markings don't get hit and, uh, and the signs go up. So uh, I know what your question is going to be yep. about <laughs> notifying people. We haven't come to a conclusion yet. Might be the Ward 3 Alderman that could send <laughs> something out. I, I have no problem sending something out, but um, people that drive <clears throat> through that way are not always Ward 3 people. There are people that, that use that as a commuting. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see an electronic sign go up prior to this, giving some notice. I don't care if it's electronic or if it's just a big sign that goes up, a temporary sign that says, as of this date, this is now gonna be a one way. Um, I think that's really important because they use Franklin Street and they use Charles um, as a pass in. Right now it's a two way. I understand it's gonna become one way. Um, and, and you know, with those side streets and so on, I'd like them to get a heads up at least a one week I, I, I can contact, I can go knocking on everybody's door there, but those aren't all the people that travel through there, so. Uh, DPW um, is the ones that own those signs, <coughs> yep. and, and I think they're amenable to putting the signs here, but uh, Dan Hudson, we've got to find where they could put them. Yeah. There's not a lot of spaces that we own where they could put the signs, but we'll see. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be a safety issue if we don't do it, so thank you. Yeah. Oh, yes, Alderman Wilshire. Just wanted to say that if, if you think it's going to be a big issue, we could ask the police department to sit out there for a couple of days and... Oh, that's already a given. Okay. <laughs> yeah. They'll be monitoring it for the first few days. Yes, Ms. Bishop? Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking down, well, into winter, because I'm one of those commuters that likes to cut through there and uh, avoid all the traffic. Um, but it's also one of those things in the winter that if you're trying to skate through there and avoid traffic, there's also a bit less road because of the snow removal. How are we going to manage the snow removal with more teachers parking there and student and parent pickup? Because I know a lot of the the snow is pushed up. It seems I'm sure they're not. A, it's on other property. It's not on Nashville property. It's probably private property. But um, where are we going to put it's, it all? It's been addressed. I mean, fortunately, uh, we own DPW, and. Uh, <laughs> they will be removing the snow in front of the school, not plowing it up on the sidewalk. Oh, wow. So, and, and it will be one way, so mm -hmm. the snow can be pushed to the other side. Mm -hmm. uh, but the uh, en city engineering department's figuring that all out. And that'll, they'll have that all ironed out before the winter, hopefully. Hopefully it doesn't snow ne next week. You just, you just jinxed it. <laughs> Right. Again, remember that year? Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right. Ken. My turn. Okay, thank you, everybody. Uh, Ken Lamary with Harvey Construction. So the agenda that I distributed uh, digitally and uh, I've handed out some hard copies, um, I'll just run through. Uh, Kathy and I will do a quick update on all the schools. So this is the McCarthy Middle School, Penichuk Fairgrounds, and Franklin Street. Uh, then I have a couple of uh, subcontractor recommendation letters for the McCarthy Middle School, as well as three new PCOs and one PCCO, and then I'll turn it over to Kathy, and she can run through the items for Franklin Street. Just so, in fairness to Ken, the pictures, he has a hard time keeping up because the work changes every hour. <laughs> it is true. Uh, so quick update at the McCarthy Middle School right now. So I'll start with what's going on outside of the building and the site development and how things are moving along there. So 
The new entry road, which is officially D'Antonio Drive off of Buck Meadow, that is, that is pretty much the final grade. Uh, we're working with Nashua DPW and the town engineer to make sure that we're meeting all of the local standards and uh, practices for a city street, because that is going to be a city street. So we are we're going to be paving that and all of the parking lots binder coat the uh, the week of the seventh of November. So that will really clean up the site and get things uh, ready for the win the impending winter that Alderman Dow just referenced there. So. <laughs> Oops. It also helps things. It helps uh, us on site with storage and materials and, and whatnot. So um, so as I so obviously. The gravels and the grading of all those areas are, are well underway and in progress. I just mentioned the, uh, the paving will be taking place in the first week of November. And um, once that's complete, we'll be able to shift the construction entrance to the Buck Meadow side and we'll make a lot of the uh, constituents and residents happy because we've been using the medallion side uh, for our construction engine. So that'll be shut down for uh, emergency traffic only and all of the construction traffic will be limited to the other side of the site. So that'll make things a lot quieter up towards the building. Uh, electrical service to the building, we are in progress right now. All of the utility poles have been run up D'Antonio Drive. Uh, we just received a uh, final word that the easement has been addressed with between city, the city and Eversource, which is the power supplier, uh, which allows us to get, um, get going with Eversource to get uh, permanent power to the building, which will help us just in time for the winter. Uh, transformer and uh, the pad, that is all complete. So once, once, we get the, um, once we get the electrical run, we can get things moving and um, get permanent power established. Uh, other site items, the retaining walls are ongoing as well as any, uh, I think the remaining culvert for uh, the critter crossings for the NHDES. The, the, the final one's going in, I believe will be complete tomorrow. Um, and that will satisfy all of the DES and uh, AOT um, items that we had to meet for design requirements. And then as well, uh, probably will be weather permitting, we'll be working on the athletic fields, um, the cuts and fills, up near um, that side of the site, probably until the beginning, beginning to middle of December, as, as long as weather permits. So we'll be we'll be still picking away at the site work portion, um, well into the later part of this year. So moving into the building area. So again, uh, the sequence is building C, B, D, A, and basically follow the same sequence, working down up. So the, like from the bottom floor up to the top floor. Um, all the in building C, all the concrete slabs and deck has com been complete. The roofing is fully installed, and now we're, I believe, we're finishing all the spray fireproofing, which is um, which gets us all the fire rating for the structural steel and the slab. Um, they'll be completing that uh, that entire building uh, this week. Um, I'll, I'll be touching on the fireproofing yeah, just, later too. Yeah, we're going to be bringing up something that I had to approve to keep the fireproofing going. This is what. We're talking about fireproofing and everything, all the steel, everything is sprayed and we'll be addressing that in uh, PCOs later. Thank you. Area B, so again, uh, so believe it or not, in Area C, we're gonna be starting drywall in another month or so. So things will be moving quickly and the pictures will start to take shape. Area B, all the concrete slabs on grade and deck have been completed. The roof has been installed on that building as well. And now that once the fireproofing is complete this week in area C, we'll be moving over to ground floor area B. Area D, all the structural steel um, erection has been completed. All detailing is in progress. Uh, detailing is all the kind of the spot welding and miscellaneous um, items that need to be addressed by, by individual workers and the roofing will be complete uh, middle of this month in November. Area A, which is the, the area of the building that has the gymnasium, uh, slab on grade prep and placements in progress. Uh, that's where we were staging the crane for that was erecting the steel, so we kind of had to place that in sections. So we had a major milestone uh, yesterday. The, we erected the last piece of, of structural steel, which is a critical milestone for any construction project. So 
Uh, the crane left today, and now uh, there'll be the steel details will be on site for the next six to eight weeks, finalizing that work uh, just in time for the end of the calendar year. So everything is moving um, at, a, at a great pace at the, at the middle school here. Um, any questions before I get into the photos? Yes, sure. Um, we've heard so much about not having the right um, stuff to build, like problems with getting it. Uh, have you run into any problems yet with that? We were lucky. We were lucky enough with this project that we were able to start early. So if you recall, I think early at the end of 2021, we had a few trade contractors that we signed up ahead of time so we were able to procure material in time so it wouldn't be, affect our schedule. So roofing, steel, electrical, uh, HVAC, items like that. So we've, we've been able to stay ahead of any of those problem items on this project. We're in good shape in that regard and, and we saved a lot of money by buying the stuff up front. Uh, if you were trying to do, start today, it'd be a lot more expensive. Okay, so moving into some photos. So here is a photo of the this photo is taken in area A as steel's being erected. A lot of these photos are going to look pretty similar for the next few months because of the, the just the nature of where we are in construction. But uh, Alderman Down mentioned the, the spray fireproofing. So basically, when this is applied, we every all the rest of the workers have to kind of evacuate that floor. So it's a very messy process, and then they go through. They tarp. They tarp certain aspects off that that don't receive the fireproofing, and then they go through clean, and then drop up and move up to the next floor. So this is uh, area C. You can see we've started um, the exterior framing. Again, as Alderman Dowd mentioned earlier, we're already putting exterior sheathing on the on the building. So it already we're already behind on these photos, unfortunately. And Ken, I don't know if you're going to point out, but that on the left there, um, that those set of steel going up, that's the uh, community stair area in the cafeteria. So that's the framing for that. So you're kind of you're in the cafeteria right now in that photo. Uh, this photo up here on the left is a, a, a view from the top of Building B, and this is looking at the athletic field. So you can see that, uh, just how much work is going into. Um, you know, all the, all the cuts and fills. And when I say cuts and fills, it's taking away grade, bringing in new dirt, making sure that everything's level. Uh, there's a lot of, lot of work out in that area. So they'll be working out there probably until the, probably the middle of December to get things ready so we can plant this, uh, the grass seed in the spring. Uh, here's a view of area A from the top of area B. So Jamie mentioned the view that you get uh, when you go up there. So if, any, if anybody wants to come take a tour and, bra and, <laughs> and brave the climb to the top, you're welcome. Pretty good climb. <laughs> yeah. uh, here's an ad. Uh, Alderman Dowd mentioned earlier the, the underground utilities that we need to run. These are the primaries to the transformer and generator um, you know, from D'Antonio Drive. And then just an example of uh, decking before concrete goes down from building B. Any questions in the McCarthy Middle School? Okay, jumping over to Penichuk Middle School. So uh, for the most part, as Jamie mentioned, we're pretty well um, ahead of the game here. The, really the only, we have a, a few miscellaneous areas that we're working on. Uh, the main area that we're working in right now is the new library addition. So we're targeting to turn that over in December and allow Mr. Smith and their uh, custodial staff to get in and move everyone in, uh, in at the end of December. So right now we're just um, doing a lot of site grading, sidewalk prep that's, that's ongoing with, uh, with landscaping. The brick veneer will be complete at the end of this week and also we'll be we're working on the metal panels and the tactile um, concrete panels at the exterior of the building. Those will be ongoing for the next probably three or four weeks there. Uh, now that the brick, uh, now that the mason is complete, 
they can break down the, all of their um, their mortar silos that are placed near the athletic fields, which will allow us to complete the the new gates and the rest of the fencing at the athletic fields that was added to this project. Those will be going in, I believe, in I think two weeks. They're scheduled. Uh, the framing and the drywall of the learning commons is complete. You'll see some photos uh, on the next slide here. And we're, we've uh, prime, primed and already started painting in there and installing ceiling grid. And all the MEP finishes, what, registers, grills, diffusers, lights, uh, those are going, um, going in starting next week. All of the science classrooms have been turned over. I'll, I'll have, a, I have a photo of, of a typical science classroom there. Um, special ed speech and the quiet rooms will be complete, uh, I believe, in two weeks. We're just waiting on some, some rubber flooring, it's just one of those ma tough materials we ha we've had a, an issue getting a hold of. So um, Principal Fazzarano and his staff have been gracious in understanding our, the issues that we're dealing with day to day. Uh, gymnasium, we have a photo here of the new bleachers and gymnasium uh, that was complete and turned over early October. I believe they had that. I, I believe they had their first volleyball game last week there. So uh, wall pads, uh, I, I, it says the 31st here, but those actually were installed this week. So uh, we we and I two weeks ago we did help we did hold a uh, gym equipment training with all of the gym teachers and uh, Miss Jingress. Um, and the custodial staff as well to run, run them through how to operate the new divider curtain, the basketball hoops, and the bleachers and allow them to ask any questions and uh, make any comments. I don't know if you remember the old gymnasiums, but there's a lot more sound deadening panels. So when you have middle school kids in there, it doesn't sound like you're going to go crazy. <laughs> Remaining site improvements, um, everything else is final paved. The only thing that is not final paved at this uh, time and striped is the, the new bus loop and then um, up to the, the new entrance up to Manchester Street. So we're gonna be paving that, um, those two areas on election day, November 8th. And uh, we've been working with um, Assistant Superintendent Posca with that as well. So thank you for, I know you have a workshop that day. So we're gonna be working around around uh, you folks that day. So thank you again for allowing us to do that. Uh, as I mentioned, the remaining athletic field fencing and then the uh, landscaping and irrigation is ongoing. An example of, I believe this is the, uh, the south side of the school in the upper left-hand corner, hydro seating and landscaping that went. That's, Back one slide. Oh, sorry. Notice the solar panels. Yeah. That has to be operational by the end of the year. Here is an example. Uh, it looks like the picture got cut off a little bit, but this is the the, de the main desk in the uh, new library learning commons. This is before uh, the drywall was finished and prime painted. Example of the uh, bef before the walls were closed up, closed up in the learning commons. But n since then, the windows have been installed. All the drywall has been installed. So that's uh, moving, moving ahead in schedule there. And then here's an example of uh, a finished science room. I believe there's uh, six of them. And I think we did just add, uh, we did purchase a, a 20 more science tables, 22 more science tables. So those will be coming in February. Any questions on Penichuk? Okay, Fairgrounds Middle School, I feel like we've been talking about this school for years. Uh, <laughs> we'll finish sometime. Uh, we, th all the contract work is complete at Fairgrounds Middle School. There were a few uh, items that after we turned over the space, new, new spaces next to old spaces, just things that, that needed to be addressed. So we um, listened to the concerns of the administration and staff and figured that it was the right thing to do to address them. So we, um, we did more for a um, facilities point of view. We, had, we got larger access panels for uh, the student commons that allowed the staff to get in to perform their maintenance. So we're gonna be putting those in in uh, Christmas break of this year. And then we have uh, miscellaneous HVAC upgrades in the uh, eighth grade uh, special ed office, reading intervention, and the family and uh, consumer sciences classroom. 
that's all going to be scheduled over Thanksgiving and Christmas break. Uh, we've been working with Principal Coffee and her staff to make sure that we're not interrupting anybody. Um, so we're going to be performing all this work uh, while students and staff are not in the building. Again, notice all the solar panels on that roof. <laughs> so we're, we're almost done there. Kathy? Good evening, everyone. I'm Kathy Misko with Harvey Construction. The good news, Ken, is you can use that same fairground slide next month because that work is over Thanksgiving break, which <laughs> our meeting will be before Thanksgiving next month. Um, we only have a couple pictures here of Franklin Street. I understand it's you know, a hot subject with um, you know, the tight nature of the schedule, the location of the school, and so forth, and maybe EEI, maybe you guys I know you're later in the agenda, but maybe it makes sense to put us next to each other so you can share those photos at the same time. I think he's got a presentation on there as well. But uh, as far as these pictures exterior-wise to show the progress, uh, those, thus far those exterior egress stair towers have been installed. The fencing around it has been installed. We are working now to improve the front entry stairs, put some new hand railings there. That was a change to the scope that we're incorporating to get that done before the, actually since then the concrete has been placed. Uh, now we're working to get the hand railings approved and <coughs> released for fabrication. We're, this is a new sidewalk, so if you're at the front entry stairs and you look to the right, that new sidewalk goes out towards the playground, um, to getting that all new and working on the grades right at the front entry where there's the tip downs for the handicap ramps to get a, a new curb cut, get onto the sidewalk and have that, have the proper grades to get to those stairs and to that sidewalk that you can see. So there's kind of a lot of uh, elevation related work happening at the front of the school to get that improved as well. So that's what's been going on in the front of the school. And then inside, so the picture on the left you know, our work primarily has been, we were originally tasked with doing that second floor scope and the exterior stairs. So we have um, been doing additional work, uh, you know, as we can, but the, the second floor completion, completed product looks like what the left corridor is, new flooring is down, the paint. We've done all this work in conjunction with the other contractor, EEI, on site when all their work is hidden above the ceilings and in the walls and um, kind of working together to get it done. Um, so we have pretty much finished. There's a change order to add a door where there's currently a window in the corridor for the principal's office. So there is a little bit of additional work we're going to squeeze in here before we turn it over in Thanksgiving. But from our perspective, it, it's effectively complete. We're going to do some final cleaning. Um, you can see we've done some bathroom work, put in some new toilet partitions. And then the picture on the right is the basement work that we're doing. So we had the opportunity to begin work in the basement, especially critical for us as the abatement activity because we can't do any of that when anyone is in school. So abatement and demolition occurred and now we're sort of building back, again, working hand in hand with EEI because they're putting in all the mechanical upgrades at the same time. So uh, framing is going in, we're doing rough in in the walls and we'll be just beginning the sheetrock and be limited to quiet activities like paint and floor once, once the students are back. So as I think was mentioned earlier, we'll be able to get that floor finished as well by the end of the year. So there will be a little bit of overlap with the students, but again, we're, during our project meetings, we're talking about you know, security and safety for how our trades get in the building uh, and how they can't get in the rest of the building and how we're badging our contractors. So we're having those discussions already so that in a month's time, uh, even though the work will be limited, we still want to obviously have a protocol in place for, for our contractors. So um, then as mentioned, you know, I was asked earlier, <laughs> if, uh, earlier today, <laughs> you know, how much more we could get done. So really the, the crux of the issue for us is the abatement activities. So the remaining scope that I have is significant abatement on the third floor because it's not just a flooring abatement and demolition activity, it's also the sheetrock and the drywall compound and the existing sheetrock. So if we're changing wall layouts and, and the drywall needs to come down anyway so that we can get rid of that material and put up new sheetrock. So the, the third floor schedule is longer than doing the same activity on the second floor just by nature of the materials that are up there. So that abatement and demolition activity takes half the summer. If I only have 10 or 12 weeks in the summer, it's a month's worth of work. Whereas if I'm doing 
like on the second floor, it took us a full two weeks to contain, abate, demolish the floor, get air clearances, and take down the containment before anybody else could get in there. That's a full two week activity without talking about the drywall. So on the third floor, it's a significant portion of the summer is the problem. So our concern is being able to do all that and then get all of the other work uh, completed as well in time. So we're trying to see what we can do to utilize school vacations. Um, unfortunately, while it seems like a lot, it's a week really isn't a lot to get set up with, you know, they put the whole area in plastic. They go in in their bunny suits and they get rid of the material. Um, they have to test the and get the good clearances for the air sampling once the work is done. Once that's clear, then they can take down all the plastic and, and, and that, that process is, I have to do the setup and take down no matter how much of that demolition I can do. So that's where I'm kind of stuck. If I said, okay, well, I can break that third floor up into several pieces. I still have a lot of time in the setup and takedown. So it's, I can't just simply say two weeks worth of work, do it over two week long vacations. It's probably three, you know, so that, that's where the challenge is that we, we'll have discussions with our abatement contractor and see what's really realistic. We had already asked if maybe we could do the stairwell abatement, interior stairwells, get new flooring as well. Maybe over April break, we could do something like that. It's a smaller area versus a whole floor. <laughs> so, and you can do the floor half and half, so we can look at that, but I just, I'm not sure that a week is enough for even half a floor up on the third floor. It would work on the first floor. Long story short, it, <laughs> all that abatement activity that still has to happen it, is where my constraint is, whether it's the stairs, the first floor floor can, abatement, and the third floor floor and walls abatement. So all those things would normally happen in the beginning of the summer. So I'm trying to figure out how we can grab some of that now and see if there's anything we can do. Even, even to do the first floor abatement now will be tricky because EEI is still finishing the mechanical upgrade work on the first floor and I need I need to give 10 days notice when I'm gonna do the work and I need two weeks to do the work and right then the teachers are moving in. So I gotta divide it up or figure out what would make sense. So that's our next task to figure out how we're gonna, how we're gonna make that happen. But this is what the product looks like and um, yeah. Alder McLean. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> I think I'd learned by now. You heard the angel. My, I still can't think, yeah, the angel's in my <laughs> ear again. Yeah, he's ready to knock me over the head though, but um, how many times do you have to say it? Um, I, I will do the door-to-door, -door, especially Char I mean Winter Street and, and those that are getting the, the blunt of, the, of that, and I will talk to them <coughs> about what you're doing, and I appreciate you trying to get it done while they're not there. It actually lessens the end of the contract, so you know, I, I will let them know that, that that's happening. Um, I will definitely take that task on. I will create a, um, a little chart. I will give it to Alderman Dowd and I will ask him to give it to you to see if I'm on track before I knock on doors and handle that, if that's okay with you. Sure. Okay, thank you, I appreciate that. And um, when you're talking about the first floor, we not, are we going to have students on the first floor? It, November, it's only the second floor, right? Just the second floor. Just, the second floor. Just on the second floor. Okay, thank you. Um, so if you could do quiet, but you can't do abatement while there's anybody in the building, including Correct. EEI or anything else like that. I understand that. Right. Um, so you're not gonna do painting if you have to do abatement. So all right. that has to be pushed, is that correct? So the abatement really has to happen first. It does. No matter what. And okay. then demolition to, so we can reconfigure the walls. So the first part of the work is noisy. Right. And until we can, get the, the walls up and the materials in it and the sheetrock gun, you know, the screw guns going, wah, wah, wah. you, you want to get that done. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then, then we can start being quieter with our finishes and flooring and ceilings and, you know, that sort of work. And, and I appreciate it. And, and there's nothing I know you can do about the noise. There's, there's no such thing as a soft hammer or saw. So, I mean, it is what it is. And I, and I appreciate it. Um, just as long as we're um, not doing things too, too early. Our ordinances, I think, say you can come in at 7 a.m. and that's the way it is, and I'm not going to ask you to do anything fixed. differently. I know, no, that's not the point that I'm trying to make. <laughs> um, but, I, but I'm going to let the, the um, remind those that live in that area that you can start work at this time. Right. You'll be as respectful as possible, but there's only so much you can do without pushing this forward. So right. I also want to get this on the record, so anybody who is listening um, does hear it. And I do want to make a comment that oftentimes people look at that area as a low-income area, and 
you already feel like you're not taken into the um, project. And the fact that I haven't gone knocking door to door to give them a timeline and so on, that's on me. That's not on you. So um, I appreciate everything that you're doing. Thank you. So anybody that had been in the school previously and went in now, you'd be even more amazed than fairgrounds. Went up here. My question was, um, with all this abatement that still has to go on, I just want to make sure that I know, like, where exactly are the kids going? Are they all going back there? I thought that it was the basement and the third floor that was being used for kids, but I guess not. So when, on November 28th, the Brentwood program, so the high school students will be going to the third floor. That's where they they were this past year. Uh, and if you recall, they, the preschool could not go on the second floor because we didn't have the emergency egress stairways on the exterior. So all, all of them are going to be on the second floor. So there won't be any students on the first floor at all. We still have to work out some details. I mean, I, th I think the building principal's on the first floor, but we can move him around. Uh, the school nurse is on the first floor. We got to figure that piece out. But other than that, um, there's not going to be anybody on the first floor. I have a question then. Because uh, we had, we I had have kids running down and seeing the school nurse on the first floor. <laughs> We've already figured that part out. So that <laughs> you knew what I was going to ask. Huh? All right, well, thank you. <laughs> the other piece that will be going on is there's some uh, some upgrades, if you will, to the elevator, which will be happening this summer as well. Um, speaking of value engineering, um, so that that elevator will be in good shape. It, it works now, but we'll make sure it's in better shape because it's got kids in it. Before we get into the cost proposals, do you want to move yeah. the EI report up in the agendas for your pictures since we're on the subject? Sure. Do you have um, our PowerPoint? It's br this is brief, I promise. Um, you can just go right to the second slide. So one of the things that was mentioned were the logistical challenges, and our project did have some delivery um, challenges. The bottom right-hand side are one of the um, air handler units that um, we had ordered in November of last year. Usually that type of equipment takes about um, six months to get, so normal project that would have been in um, you know, June timeframe. Mm -hmm. And it did not come until um, end of September. So we were waiting for that. Uh, it finally came in. And so now we have all the ventilation equip equipment located in its final position. Um, we are putting the final connections that you can see. We brought the piping to it. There are hot water coils in those units. And then we're connecting the ductwork um, to the building distribution ductwork that was all completed this summer. Um, and you can see on the picture at the top right, there's what's called a displacement diffuser that brings fresh air um, into the building from that air handler uh, down to the floor so that we're the, um, right there, yep. Uh, the LED lights have all been completed and programmed. Um, so the energy savings will be substantial from that um, improvement. And um, again, this work will be substantially complete by the end of November. Next slide. Um, so the remaining work for us to do is punch list. Um, so we've been working with the school district team to create a punch list of the mechanicals, uh, testing the speaker and clock system, uh, a fire alarm testing and report. Uh, what we do, what's called the startup of the mechanical equipment where we have a manufacturer's rep come in, um, make sure everything is working properly and then give training to the um, district personnel and then do an air balance to make sure that each classroom gets the desired airflow of fresh air. So that's um, a lot of, a lot of most of the work is done, but there's a lot of fine tuning left to bring us across the finish line. Any questions? All right, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> you wanna go through the, what? Yeah, lights. I want to alarm everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ken, you want to? Yeah, so I'll jump into the, um, the 
Brian S. McCarthy Middle School item. So I've got two le letters of recommendations for subcontractors and then a few uh, PCOs and PCCOs. So uh, there are some new faces here and we haven't done a letter of recommendation in a while. So just to refresh you, uh, we take the Harriman design and then we, we bid it out to various subcontractors. Um, oftentimes we try to get at least three bids. Sometimes we get less based on how busy they are and uh, maybe qualified worker. Um, so a lot of, and these, these minor items that are left are basically just, um, you know, fencing, signage, a lot of the niche items where we wanna make sure we get it right with input from um, the constituents and Harriman and the school district. So um, as Jamie mentioned earlier, signage is one of those items where we wanted to make sure we were gonna get everything right. We had to wait until colors and everything were chosen before we could really, um, nail in the, the price here. So uh, the first letter of recommendation that I'm gonna be doing is for the interior and exterior signage. Um, so we did uh, reach out to three to four bidders. We solicited uh, two, um, we did receive two bidders and we're recommending the lowest qualified bidder. And this, uh, the scope that's included here is all the interior, exterior signage, all the wayfinding signage, and ADA signage at the interior and um, exterior of the school where warranted. Uh, Jamie mentioned the monumental sign for the building, the site's monumental sign. This also includes installation and all shop drawings, submittals, so Harriman can review them and get the proper product on the site. Um, so the bidder, the bidder that we're recommending, the lowest um, qualified bidder is uh, Sousa Signs. LLC of Manchester, New Hampshire. They actually performed the scope over at Fairgrounds Middle School uh, for a total contract value of $73,993.00. So I'll entertain a motion to award the signage for the McCarthy Middle School to Sousa Signs LLC of Manchester, New Hampshire in the amount of $73,993.00. So moved. So moved by Alderman Timmons. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. The last um, letter of recommendation is for the fencing bid package, and the scope of work for here is to <coughs> furnish and install all of the chain link fencing at around the, the, the track, the new basketball court, uh, the baseball and softball fields, including the backstops. Um, it's also providing the uh, fencing around the dumpster enclosure and generator enclo enclosure. So those those are going to look similar to what we've done at the other schools with the privacy slats, where you can't really see the equipment from the out the exterior of the the space. Uh, also includes the ornamental steel fencing at the playground and courtyard areas, and the uh, actually we're able to capture all of the bike racks and commercial grade trash receptacles with this contractor as well, all um, falling within our um, approved GMP budget. Uh, so we did receive two bids and we're recommending the lowest qualified bidder and that is Chasco Incorporated of Portsmouth, New Hampshire. They, inst they did all the work at Fairgrounds and Panachuk. Uh, it's a total contract value of $275,343.00. I'll entertain a motion to award the fencing contract for the McCarthy Middle School to Chasco Inc. of Portsmouth, New Hampshire in the amount of $275,343.00. So moved. So moved by Alderman Klee. Any discussion? Alderman Klee. Thank you. Just just a quick one, and it, it's in reference to both of these. Um, I always appreciate low bidder, and I appreciate that both of these are from New Hampshire um, businesses. It, it, uh, it's one of the criteria I know New Hampshire citizens like to see, mm -hmm. that when we do, we do bid in, ho uh, in state and so on. And both of these were low bidders, so thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, moving into PCO number nine, which again is a potential change order. So if approved by the committee tonight, the out of scope work can proceed on site and we can procure materials to perform that scope. So this particular item was a proposal request uh, by Harriman, Harriman and it was a client request and a safety concern to add a snow melt system, uh, roughly 1300 square feet um, to be approximate in area A at the, I believe, main entrance and the bus 
the bus area. So what that means is um, basically like a glycol loop that's poured beneath the concrete slab where, or beneath the, the pavers. So when in the winter time, we don't have ice and snow buildup for when the students and staff are uh, out there at drop off and pick up. Uh, so the scope includes all electrical, a complete HVAC uh, system, including controls required to install this uh, throughout the building in those areas that uh, I noted. Jamie, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I, I'll, I'll answer the question before it's asked. Yeah, the, uh, the snow melt system that's proposed here goes from the doorway of the main entrance and the bus entrance all the way to the end of the sidewalk or the road portion of that section. So it encompasses that whole walkway. I know there's been, it's been voiced to me on, on several occasions that there's concerns about, uh, I think it's this school, uh, it only goes to a certain portion of the way. Um, and so we heard that and carried it all the way out to the actual drive, uh, so to speak. So we'd wish we'd done it all the way to the road, but yep. <clears throat> anyway. So I'd like a motion to accept PCO number nine for the snow melt system in the amount of $119,076.09. So moved. So moved by Ms. Giglio. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, the next PCO I have is PCO number 12, and this is, um, Alderman Down alluded to this item earlier for uh, spray applied fireproofing at the decks. So I noted earlier that we apply this, we apply this spray applied fireproofing to all of the uh, steel members and structural members per the contract documents. Uh, early on, in some projects, you, you apply it to the, to the, the elevated decks, which the, the concrete slab is poured upon. In some projects, you, it's not required. At the onset of this project, there was a proposal request, and I believe it was a structural requirement, and uh, one of the first proposal requests that came out, and it changed the design of the structural slabs. We thought we caught everything, but, and we thought that we were meeting the one hour rating that's required between each floor. Having done, doing some investigation, it was found that we did not achieve a UL rating with the current design. So it was, it, we, thank God we asked the question now. Um, we, to, we now need to, we realize to re achieve that UL rating, we have to uh, spray apply the fireproofing to the elevated decks as well. So, the next two PCOs is the cost to provide that scope of work to meet the, the building code and the UL rating of a one hour fire rating. I think I did an okay job. Explaining you did. That. I'll, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll uh, uh, maybe pick up or fill in some gaps here. So right. the, um, the four story section of this building uh, per code um, meets the requirements that needs fireproofing for uh, the primary structural steel, um, which includes columns and beams and joists, um, but also the uh, the decking require is the, the the slabs, the elevated slabs, um, are required to be uh, one hour rated as well. The roof uh, is required to be one hour, which includes the deck uh, of that roof. The contract documents that Harvey originally were bidding included uh, spray fireproofing all the steel that, that's required to be uh, sprayed, um, including the roof. Um, but the UL, which is uh, underwriters listed, you know, it's the, you know require, it, it's the f uh, fire guidance. They do testing on s assemblies and, and pieces to see what the rating is. The UL listing for that, that elevated deck um, was meeting one hour when you had a one and a half inch um, steel decking and a four inch concrete slab on top of that. Uh, during uh, very, well, late in the design after bidding, there was some adjustments made structurally that changed that decking to a one inch, um, one inch deck, a steel deck with four inches of concrete. So you st kept the same amount of concrete, but the decking uh, got smaller. Um, the, that one inch deck is listed for UL, which means it's been tested. 
Um, but the the understanding was that the the understanding was that the assembly should have met, but it did not at a one inch deck. Oddly, I mean, it's contradictory to what what anybody would kind of think. You you now have more concrete than steel, but it doesn't actually technically meet without adding spray fireproofing. So the the next two PCOs address adding the spray fireproofing specifically to the deck portion of it. The, again, the steel has already been captured of those elevated uh, floors. The, again, the roof's already captured completely. The steel's been captured. It's just the decking. So I think I helped or made it worse. I'm not sure. <laughs> no, I think you did. And, and really the crux of the crux of this, of this change order is schedule driven. It, this, this, this affects seven areas of the building, seven floors of the building. So this is basically pay, getting and paying for an extra crew so we don't lose scheduled time in the overall project. So this, uh, this first PCO was presented to Alderman Dowd to allow us to direct the spray, fru, spray fireproofing contractor to proceed with the work to maintain critical path schedule. Without this work being performed, we can't do any of the overhead mechanical, electrical, framing. Nothing can be done until this is done, and it, it's a code issue. So th that is why th this first item, this first PCO, is the $50,000 signing authority presented to uh, Alderman Dowd. I believe that that's the limit of your signing authority. So the total, the total of um, you know for this additional work is captured. The balance of this work is captured in PCO 13. Uh, but the, the first PCO was really just to allow Harvey to direct our subcontractor to continue work and to maintain schedule and get that extra crew required. Wing? Uh, thank you. Uh, just, just a quick clarification. When you say one hour rating, um, does that mean one hour before fire will actually harm or hurt or move on? It protects the assembly for an hour. Well, that whole assembly is is a one hour rated so it's going to hold up in in the tested situation for an hour so it's some there's we have two hour firewalls in this building that's a two hour wall that should stand for two hours based on the ul assembly it should stand for two hours if it should a fire occur um you know it's so so yeah i mean i think i answered the question it's, you it, did yeah I and mean, it's it's a tested situation that meets the one hour rating so it holds up for an hour is the is the thought so and that was my assumption, but I just wanted to make sure that I was understanding it. It protects it for one hour. It doesn't mean that it can't spread somewhere else, but that particular assembly, as you said, is protected for one hour. Right, as required by code. It, you know, the different areas, different, if it wasn't sprinkled, it would need more fire uh, rating, you know, higher rating, but the building's sprinkled, so at one hour for this particular building type and use. Thank you. <clears throat> Just to make people feel better, the building is sprinklered, and their fire department's uh, uh, requirement is they will be there in less than 10 minutes. They're at Connett Road and, and Spitbrook Road. It won't take them that long to get there. Yes, Ms. Lampier? Um, just because this is such a large amount, um, I know that we have a cushion um, of funds, but would this affect the funding in a big way, or is this something that's already accounted for? No, this is a $77 million project. This is not a, <laughs> if there were a couple other projects I'm working on, it would be a big impact, but no. It, it's, and, and it's within, within the uh, guaranteed maximum price. Excellent. That's, that's great, thank you. It's within your overall project budget. Yeah, overall project budget, not, yeah. So, so we don't need any additional funds is usually the question. No, we don't need any additional funds. And I think we covered this in the last meeting as well uh, when we were discussing escalation. It's just a little too early in the project to take on, to absorb such a uh, large cost at this time. So at the end, if we have money left over for items unforeseen, great. Then we, then we give that money back to the district. So it's just so early in the project and such a, um, such a schedule cr critical item that it, we felt that it's best to bring forward to the committee for approval. Okay, thank you. All right, so PCO number 12 is to uh, authorize the, or cross the T and dot the I's in the fact that I've already approved this PCO, but just to bring it before the committee for a vote. 
Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Did you need somebody to move that? Did somebody make that motion? Well, we don't need a motion because... Oh, Just approve? Yeah. So I made the motion. Right. Okay, never mind. So 13, PCO 13 is okay. for the balance, <laughs> the balance of the, this uh, additional scope and this for a total value of $113,121.38. So this one I'll need uh, someone to authorize PCO number 13 in the amount of $113,121.38 for what was previously described. I'll make that motion. Okay. Mr. Lampier made the motion. Any discussion? May I make a All of you please? Yes. I just want to make a comment. So we, we the 50000 already went forward, and then we have this $113,000. Thousand uh, dollar balance, so it gives that total cost to that as one hundred and sixty three thousand one hundred twenty one dollars and thirty eight cents. Correct. Just so that we know that that's what the cost of that was. Correct. But, and I understand you approving the fifty. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, the fifty thousand was to keep us on, on schedule. On, on that. All in, I think we just voted, right? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. And again, um, having something approved before the, the committee meets is not something we like to do, but in a, in a schedule critical item such as this, uh, unfortunately, we have to bring it forward. So uh, we appreciate everybody um, working through that with us. Okay, the final item for the McCarthy Middle School is PCCO number five, and this is, um, this is a prime contract change order for the PCOs that were approved during the se September meeting. And that was for uh, the domestic water heater and storage tank revisions and the underground electrical pathways to all of the athletic fields. So um, presenting this PCCO at number five for a total amount of $50,718.07. So the PCOs associated with this have already been approved. So this is just uh, the paperwork involved with the... Uh, so I need a motion to approve PCCO number five in the amount of fifty thousand seven hundred eighteen dollars and seven cents. Alderman Timmons, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Ready for Franklin Street? <laughs> sure we are. I know Ken said we, we don't like to get our PCOs ahead of the committee, but unfortunately with <laughs> Franklin Street, we've been under a time crunch and have uh, several that we had to authorize ahead. But let me see if I can zip through these. The first PCO for Franklin Street is PCO number 16. This is a proposal request issued to rework walls in the principal's office to allow for more privacy. So basically in our weekly reviews with the with the school it was noted that mr warren could hear what was going on next right in the next classroom and vice versa and he requested that we do something about that this work hasn't taken place it's first floor work so it originally wouldn't would have happened next summer maybe sooner <laughs> um, the cost for this work is three thousand five hundred and seventeen dollars and ninety eight cents Okay, so I'll need a motion to approve PCO number 16, as was described by Ms. Um, I haven't got there yet. Okay. <laughs> uh, in the amount of $3,517.98. Does somebody want to make the motion so we can have discussion? I will. All right, Mr. Lampier made the motion. Any discussion? Alderman Timmons. Yes, thank you, Chairman. <laughs> Val, thank you very much. Uh, I have a question on the, um, the walk. This time, for Will it be soundproof? Mike. Mike. The angels Thank were you, speaking. Jim. Angels. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't kill me up. <laughs> okay, would this be soundproof or not? The walls don't currently go all the way up above the ceiling to the structure. So what we would be doing is in adding insulation into the wall and extending the walls all the way up to the deck. It's not the same as adding a sound panel. Mm -hmm. Right, it's not soundproof. Uh, it's it's giving privacy. It's like any classroom that we would separate, we'd we'd provide drywall on both sides, all the way to the deck, sealed. 
uh, and insulation inside there. So that, that these walls before were just drywall and only went up just above ceiling. So sound was tran transmitting above and what did not have insulation, acoustic insulation in it. So these will now have that. Okay. It'd be fine unless somebody's screaming. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. Um, the motion's been made. Any dis further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The next PCO for Franklin Street is PCO number 17. We needed to add a six foot gate into the fence that exists around the exterior egress stairs mm -hmm. as requested by the Nashua folks, the plant operations, in order to gain access to some equipment that EEI had installed in that same confined um, fence. So on one side of the building where the stairs come down, there's also some mechanical equipment enclosed. So they needed access to where that equipment is set. So we had our fencing contractor come out once and so we needed to get it approved so we could get him out there and include the, the requested gate for access to the equipment at the same time. So this PCO number 17 to add the gate is for $1,716.30. No, I was just going to say I, I had to request that it be signed so we could get the work done. Right. So this was uh, within Mr. Smith's authorization, so he signed it. Uh, so this is we just need a motion to approve. Uh, finally, the PCO number 17, the amount of $1,716.30. Alderman Clean? Yes, I'll, I'll do that. All right. And any I just have a quick question, if any that's okay. discussion? Alderman Clean? Thank you. Um, is this the same gate that we see in these, in these pictures, or has this not been done yet? It has been done. It has been done, but it's not these within this picture of the Franklin It's in Street. the black chain link fence, but I'm not sure which picture that is. This just shows around the... Um, yeah. This stairwell, and mm -hmm. I don't understand why you can't see a picture of this big across the room. Honestly, I, I, do, I do not believe I do not believe it is that particular gate. The gate was uh, in an area of the mechanical unit. Okay. That one you're seeing there is the one that the stairs egress okay. out of. Okay. Uh -huh. so. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Did you, is that one all set? You voted? That one's all set. Do we have to vote? No, we don't yeah, have to vote, vote on it because I already voted. Did. Yeah, we did. Did we vote on it? No. We, we can vote, vote on, on it. it. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. The next PCO for Franklin Street is PCO number 18, and this was a proposal request to provide a new corridor door for the principal's office and um, a closet door in the adjacent adjoining office space. This is another request made by the staff uh, when they came and uh, walked to the school at one point. They requested that there's basically a window into the principal's office and she requested a door in that location. So this is another example in order to get a door frame on order. Um, I mentioned we're just about to start doing that work to squeeze it in before Thanksgiving. We had to get the materials ordered. So this is another example I asked to get this um, approved as well. So we have some corridor demo. We have to order a door frame, put in uh, a new door, obviously, get it painted and so forth. Um, the cost of this PCO number 18 is $6,310.29. So again, this was a schedule item, so it was previously approved by me. And for final approval, I'd like a motion for PCO number 18 in the amount of $6,310.29. So moved. Mr. Giglio, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by <coughs> saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Kathy? PCO number 19. For Franklin Street is for proposal request number nine, which is the front entry steps, the handrails that go on those. So that's um, another example. We showed it in the pictures how we're already reworking those steps and we need to get those railings fabricated. This proposal request is where the design was issued for what those railings are going to look like. And the, the cost to add those railings is $7,471.45. And again, since this was a uh, scheduling issue and to get the work done on time, uh, I approve this in the amount of $7,471.45. So I need a motion to uh, solidify that for PCO number 19. Would somebody like to make that motion? 
I'll make that motion. All right. Alderman Timmons made the motion. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. PCO number 20 for Franklin Street is for ASI number 10 relating to the <clears throat> basement bathrooms. We had an existing condition where the walls in the bathroom were not, the rooms weren't as big as we thought, as what we had depicted on the plans and how, how what we thought. And so in reviewing the existing condition, we found that we could rejigger the walls and get the space required to make the bathroom larger uh, and make it more appropriate. So we asked the question um, and how we could change the bathroom stall dimensions rather than shrinking down the bathroom to squeeze it into what was there. It made more sense to actually improve the situation. So we asked the question, got the dimensions clarified through an RFI and an ASI uh, to demo some uh, the existing walls and build the new new basement walls into a larger area to make more space. So the cost for PCO number 20 is $4,993 six cents. So again, to keep things on schedule, uh, I authorize this. So I'd like a motion to um, completely authorize PCO number 20 in the amount of $4,993.06. So moved by Alderman Wilshire. Any discussion? Alderman Klee. Thank you, and I, I'm sorry for so many questions and comments, but um, I, I have no issue with this, but when we're talking about keeping things on schedule, but we also talked about the fact that um, the basement is ahead of schedule and we're not, um, when, you, when you talk about that, is that because there was a team there doing something else and to send them away would cost more money? It's that as well as just noise. We wanna make sure we can, if they get the walls done, then we can go ahead and continue with the follow-on work. Um, so if they, they did some demolition, it's noisy, we wanna do it while the crew's there framing the other walls and working and getting the other demolition done, so. Perfect answer, thank you. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. So the last PCO for this evening is PCO number 21 in the amount of zero dollars. <laughs> so um, what we had uh, briefly mentioned earlier was that part of our uh, contract budget for Franklin Street had a $100,000 allowance to upgrade the existing elevator at the Franklin Street School. So uh, we have had a few meetings with Stanley Elevator and reviewed the condition of the existing elevator and while it works, they gave us a, a, a giant laundry list of things to improve. Uh, we were able to sit down with them and say, okay, why don't you give us what's actually really necessary and uh, what really needs to be done. And uh, in reviewing the budget funds and so forth, we found that we could um, increase the elevator upgrade allowance and decrease our escalation allowance. We've been fortunate not to spend the escalation money so far. So we're just moving money so that we can go forth with the, with the elevator work. So that would increase our allowance for the elevator work to 200,000. We already know that the component of work for Stanley Elevator is 148,000. So that leaves us just roughly $50,000 to continue with. There's a associated work like electrical upgrades that are required to go along with this. So there will be some additional costs. So we felt it was a good idea to just re, to reallocate that escalation money uh, to put it for something useful uh, for improvements for the school rather than not being able to do any of that work. So again, it's PCO 21 is technically for $0, reallocating funds from the escalation allowance to the elevator upgrade allowance. So I need a motion to approve PCO number 21 for $0 for the upgrade of the elevator. I will. <laughs> <laughs> Out in the limb, are we? Okay, the motion is to uh, approve PCO number 21, the amount of $0. Alderman Klee. Uh, thank you. Um, more related to the escalation, um, dollars how much is in that and I, I know we've still got a lot to do in this are do we honestly feel that there's enough in that that we could there is okay. it was a uh, $447,000 allowance that we haven't haven't spent yet so we're taking a hundred out of it we still have a nice chunk left thank you so much I appreciate that yeah trust me this is one of the smaller projects so we're very tight when we approve things yes I know well, thank you good. All right, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. My last document is prime contract change order number five, which just incorporates the approved PCOs, some of which we just approved this evening, but the PCOs from last meeting and 
some from this meeting are included. So PCOs 15, 17, 18, 19, and 20 are included in this PCCO number five for the value of $64,983.58. So the motion is to approve PCCO number five in the amount of $64,983.58 on previously approved PCOs. I have a motion. I'll, I'll do it. Alderman Klee. Yes. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Please hear the Bible. <laughs> all right. Uh, Mr. Smith, you want to do invoices? Actually, we have some bid awards first. Oh, you want to do that? Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so in your packet that you received uh, last week, you uh, I said, included a memo with the original uh, um, bids that we received for three consultants. Uh -huh. So for the architect to complete their work and then subsequently for the construction manager to do their work, we need three consultants. One for surveying of the sites. This is for Maine Dunstable and Brookshield, by the way. Uh, then we need the geotech engineer to discover what's underneath the ground, where we may potentially be uh, adding to the buildings. And then finally, uh, we need to know, verify where all the uh, edison materials are, and, and then provide work plans so that the, uh, so the abatement contractor, for example, can do their thing. Um, so I'll talk about the uh, hygienist first. So that's that's the company that's going to do develop the work plans, they're going to verify the hazardous materials in the schools. Uh, it's a little more complicated than just looking at what's the cost of the report, what's the cost of verify. The really big expense for those people is their time in the school observing the abatement and then doing the clearances after the fact. So the numbers I originally presented to you last week uh, were, were nice, but they don't tell you anything. Um, as it turns out, the uh, the cheapest contractor when we put put everything together, that's on that spreadsheet that I, I handed this out tonight. Yeah. Uh, and it, you just go down the very bottom line, which is always a good thing to do. Um, and you'll see there's a total budget. These are based upon estimates that uh, Chris Lassard and I put together. These are how, how many hours we expect that the uh, contractor will be there, um, and then how many tests we expect that they will have to take. So it's our best guess based upon past projects. Uh, and so RPF uh, Environmental is the uh, parent little bidder. They've done good work for us before. They've been in the middle school project, actually. So that's my recommendation. We proceed with them. Want to take these one at a time, Alderman Dowd? Or? Yes. So we'll need uh, a motion to approve. The industrial hygienist for the main Dunstable Birch Hill to RPF um, Associates in the amount of $5,642. So moved. Uh, uh, oh. No, it's the 49812, right? What? It's on the, page, it's on the uh, document I handed out tonight. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. the, the front page is $5,642. Yeah, those right. were the original bids. Okay. And then uh, I was uh, trying to explain to you that those, those don't tell the whole story. You have to go to the spreadsheet uh. that's attached. <laughs> so, uh, I, I guess I would suggest, you know, just go not to exceed $50,000 at this point. Okay. Nice round number. Not. All right. So, need a motion to approve RPF. Environmental Northwood, New Hampshire, in an amount not to exceed fifty thousand dollars. So moved. Ah, Mr. Clappy. Oh, Neil. Okay. Neil woke up. <laughs> I had one question. Okay, so motion on the floor is to approve RPF Environmental Northwood, New Hampshire, in an amount not to exceed fifty thousand. Questions? Just one. Yes. Neil. Thank you. Um, who are the uh, hygienists for uh, fifty-five Franklin? Scott Lawson Group. And overall, are you happy with their work? 
We have. They were also hired by EEI to do their piece of the work. So it made a lot of sense at Franklin Street with the two different contractors to make sure we had the same contractors. So it was, it was a little different there. Um, whereas here, you guys are doing the hiring of the consultant, however, however you choose. I would say the, the, uh, one of the reasons we didn't go with, I mean, they were the highest, <laughs> when you go through our mathematics here, uh, they also did not provide bids for uh, lead testing or for PCBs, which we clearly had an RFP for them to bid on. And they chose, they, they didn't have the in-house capability to do that. So. so also having had many discussions with Attorney Bolton, we have to, we, when we get proposals in, we evaluate them to see if they're qualified. We have to approve the lowest qualified bidder. Oh, we're in trouble. Alderman McLean? Uh, just a, a quick question. They are the highest bidder, and yet they still didn't provide those those two items. Is, is it, you said that they don't have any in-house expertise for that particular thing, which is why They're they didn't the provide bidder, it. They're not the high bidder. No, Lawson was the high bidder. A am I correct? B based on our estimates of the actual oh, work, yeah, yeah. yes, right. they are. Okay. Yes. O okay. Uh, thank you. All right, so we've heard the motion and the discussion. Any other further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The next one's a little bit easier. Uh, it's geotechnical services. This is where they're looking for what's underground. Uh, involves doing test pits and, and potential borings and that sort of thing. Uh, the architect needs this information to uh, finalize their drawings so they can develop the construction drawings. Had three bidders. Uh, these are all RFPs that went out on the street. They're advertised and went on the city website. So we, we got full coverage. Um, three bidders and John Turner Consulting was the cheapest. Uh, their price was 15750 They also indicated that if we uh, provide an in-house uh, backhoe and operator, they'll take $2,000 off that price. That's what we did at Franklin Street, um, and we feel we can do that here too. But just in case, <laughs> I would like us to approve the fifteen thousand seven fifty. I mean, you know, in case our backhoe breaks or <laughs> operators out that day or whatever. <laughs> okay, well, the, the least expensive, not the cheapest. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the lowest bid, yes. So lowest qualified on the, bidder. On the geotechnical services, I'd like to have a motion to award. The geotechnical services for the main Dunstable Birchill projects to uh, John Turner <laughs> Consulting on a, not to exceed $16,000. Alderman Klee? Um, I'll make that motion. Alderman Klee made the motion. Any discussion? Alderman Klee? A again, I, I always look at these bids and obviously we go with the lowest score. Why would something like Weston Sampson be over twice of, of both of them? Was there something special they were going to do that? I, I don't know. I uh, honestly, once I saw that price, I just kind of put it aside. <laughs> they, they're also, I mean, they had an office in New Hampshire, I think in Manchester, but I'd never heard of them before. So I, I honestly, I just said, okay, well, they're way out of our price range. Honest answer, thank you. We always get concerned if we don't have a relationship with them, especially when they're double the price. Yeah. Oh. If I could, the first two contractors we've worked with, uh, John Turner is our testing agency for the uh, middle school project, and they have a wide range of engineers on their staff. That's why they're here. SLR International was uh, formerly uh, Malone and McBroom, and they were the geotech for the middle school project. We, we've got background with both of those. All right. Um, so the last one is surveying services. I'm not prepared a rec recommendation tonight. We, we're still trying to ferret out uh, who's the lowest qualified bidder. Um, you can see the prices. The prices haven't changed. Uh, they all have uh, wetland scientist capability, which is something we did require in the RFP. Uh, one of them, which I will not name here, has at least three cases of litigation in their background. Pending. An ongoing pending litigation. Mm -hmm. That makes us pause. Yeah. Quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I need to actually do, we, we talked to Attorney Bolton this afternoon. So his suggestion was, you know, call references and, and see what's going on there, um, which I will do. But I would suggest that you, uh, all the, the other three bidders, uh, 
are qualified, good companies. Uh, you, you recognize the top one on there, Hainer Swanson. We've worked, <laughs> they've, they're with us uh, for a lot of our projects, yep. including the middle school project. So I, I would recommend that you uh, authorize the chairman of this committee to uh, award a contract to the lowest Most qualified, qualified low bidder. bidder. Yes. Um, did we vote on the um, on the other one on the geotechnical services? I feel like we made the motion but didn't vote. Is am, am I? That's right, I don't have it right no, you, you're, you're right. right. Okay. Oh, all right. Thank you, Regan. <laughs> Jumping back to the uh, geotechnical. geotechnical uh, again, that's to John Turner. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Is Motion that carried. the one that Neil um, second? We did one on his. Seconds. No, I, 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 I did, did this one. It. Oh, yeah. you did that yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Back to the surveying s services. Uh, I'd like a motion to approve that the joint special chairman award the contract to the, the lowest qualified bidder. For most qualified. Most qualified. Most qualified. Yes, lowest price, most qualified. Not lowest qualified and highest price. I'll make that motion and then I just have one comment <laughs> or Motion's question. Motion made by Alderman Klee. Any discussion? Alderman Klee? Uh, thank you. Um, I just, for anybody that's listening, um, we're authorized, uh, a yay vote here would authorize you to make this decision, but you would be going with the lowest qualified bidder, which is what we would do in essence, and you have authority from us to go up to 50,000. Yeah. Is that correct? Just yeah. for those that are listening, I want to make sure yes. that they understand that we're just not handing you the keys to the, uh, <laughs> and, and to the city and say, go for it. And, yeah. and, and you've already stated that you would do low qualified bidder. Right. And uh, we're following the guidance of the Corporation Council. So. Um, and that one that has the three litigations, even if they came in low qualified bidder, you and will that's not. That's the discussion we're having. Okay. I just want to, I, 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 my concern is if we ended up going with them, I would think the, this body may want to have a little bit of a discussion. <laughs> so, but we'll leave it at that. Thank you. Yeah. All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. John? Okay. There's also in your packet a um, proposal from a company <laughs> called Greenlight Interactive. And this was actually already approved by Alderman out so we could get the ball rolling uh, the, it, this is this concerns what uh, Jamie was discussing earlier in, in the cafeteria we have three what do you call them rolling overhead doors overhead doors yes they roll down uh, so instead of just having plain old silver black whatever uh, we want to put some sort of design on those things and we've talked about this McCarthy Mustangs, we just talked about putting the logo on it. Um, but the, we, somebody came up with the idea of doing something a little more special. I, I think Jamie gets credit for that one, I think. <laughs> so, for example, uh, you could have a pan, 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 uh, say the word for me. Panoramic? Panoramic? Panoramic. Panoramic. Yes. Uh, scenes of Nashua across it. You know, you could go different parts of the city. You could see downtown. You could go over the river. Uh, so, this company is the one that's going to put all that together and then come up with in the proper um, pixel format uh, to give to Harvey and then they can have it transferred to the actual median of the doors themselves. The doors are what panels like this or slats? Yeah, it's, it's like a coiling door. So there's a, a coil roll up above the uh, soffit that you won't, you won't see. It's up above the ceiling. And then when you when that comes down, this electronic comes down. It, it has like slats uh, uh, horizontal across the whole thing. Um, I did want to mention to Mr. Smith that the cost to apply that graphic has already been approved from the JSSB uh, SBC as part of the contract uh, with Harvey. So they're ready to do that. They just need that format, uh, for, formatted image or, or whatever it ends up being uh, by this group. Should you choose to accept it. So. So the request for this contractor was from the school department, and they will be selecting ultimately, I guess, the 
design. Design, yeah. Okay. So, and what was the amount? So Stacy Hines was kind of behind all this. Yeah. Uh, the amount was five thousand dollars, even. All right. So, need a motion. It's already been approved, but uh, need a motion to uh, for formalize the five thousand dollars to the uh, green light interactive, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. All right. Who wants to make that motion? I will. Um, yes. Ms. Julio? Yes. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And I might go out on a limb and say the school department might check with the Board of Ed on, on the final design. But yeah. it won't be come back here because we're not going to pick we don't pick colors, we don't pick mascots, and we don't pick whatever's going on the wall. Yeah, I mean, it may come back to us in, in like a presentation form, but I don't anticipate us needing to um, no. needing to vote on on what the what administration picks for a picture. That's that's <laughs> more of the the micromanaging detail that they're yeah. that they're tasked to do. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. All right. We don't need to do everything. No. No. Anything else, Mr. Smith? Why would we have them? Just uh, exactly. <laughs> what? Invoices. Yes. Well, yeah. mm -hmm. Invoices. Okay. So we have a good number of invoices to approve tonight. Now I'm just reading from your agenda. Uh, first one's for budget blinds. So these were blinds for Penetruck Middle School. Upon review, we discovered, particularly in existing part of the school, a lot of the blinds were you know, in poor shape or non-existent. Uh, Disaster. We then so we brought them in. We got several bids, and they were awarded the contract. Cost three seven thousand three hundred ninety nine dollars. Control Technologies uh, one invoice uh, four thousand one hundred seventeen dollars even. It's for work at Fairgrounds Middle School on the uh, mechanical systems. We have uh, five invoices from Harriman for work at the Brian S. McCarthy Middle School, Penetruck Fairgrounds, Birchill, and Maine Dunstable all totaling $169,167.94. For Harvey Construction, we have three invoices for work at Fair, for Franklin Street, Panachuk, and McCarthy Middle Schools, uh, totaling $3,739,735.47. For Hainer Swanson, uh, one invoice for work at McCarthy Middle School, $1,680, they are, again, the surveying company. John L. Turner uh, for work uh, at McCarthy and Penachuk uh, Middle Schools, to three invoices totaling $16,646.50, and that was for testing purposes. One invoice from the Turner Group, um, actually, uh, actually there's two invoices in there, Mm -hmm. Like three. <laughs> um, sorry, no, it was just two. But they total uh, one for Penachuk and one for M McCarthy Middle School. They are commissioning agent. Uh, totals $7,882.88. One invoice from Vanessa and Associates. We'll work at Penachuk, $403.65. They are our traffic consultant. So all those total uh, for Franklin Street, $307,232.55. For the middle school project, $3,580,625.85. And for the Birch Hill Main Dunstable project, $59,174.04. For a grand total of $3,947,032.44. I'm going to take these one at a time since they come from different buckets of money. Uh, so I'd like to get an, a motion to approve the invoices for the Franklin Street project in the amount of $307,232.55. So moved. So moved by <laughs> Mr. Classy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any discussion on that one? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next is the middle school project <laughs> invoices in the amount of three million five hundred eighty thousand six hundred twenty-five dollars and eighty-five cents. 
Uh, I'll make them. Oh, okay. I'll do it. Miss Lamphere. Okay. Uh, any discussion on that? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Birch Hill, Maine Dunstable, invoices in the amount of $59,174.04. I'll do that. Uh, Mrs. Bishop. <laughs> okay. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Um, you notice the relative difference in in monies based on the size of the projects. So. Yes. Okay. I, yep. I, I do have a question. Yes. <laughs> I, when we were going over the, the invoices, I, I did see a very small one for um, the um, fairgrounds. $280. $280. Why d is that not listed and we didn't vote on that one, or does it matter? Say that again? We did not vote on Franklin. I mean, I'm sorry, Frank. Um, fairgrounds, middle school, the $280. That's part of the middle school project. Okay, so it would just be part of the middle school yeah. project. Okay, yeah. Just Thank you so not much. Quite totally My brain done. is, yeah, <laughs> on vacation. I keep thinking middle school, Brian, S. McCarthy <laughs> School, yeah. Okay, comments by committee members? We don't have anything from Maine Dunstable. We, we did um, virtual, but not Maine Not yet, we just oh, okay. money. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is late. Yes. Uh, Alderman Clean. Thank you so much. Um, I've been writing things down as, as we've been talking, and um, as, as much as I've been talking, I want to make sure that I reiterate my my thanks to all that are working on this, and and the biggest thank is for the listening to the comments from staff and just j in general. Um, the PCO number nine is a prime example of when you listened and, and made changes to, to follow that up. Um, and, the, and the PCO for the Franklin School is, is the same, same thing. You listened to what the staff had to say with the principal and so on, and, and we've made the adjustments. And um, I think that's important for people to hear that we don't just have a plan, go in and do it and walk away from it. Mm -hmm. um, and even the due diligence of the, um, the, the fire, um, the, the, the foam and so on like that, knowing that there was a difference before it went too far. It just tells me that you guys are constantly watching, constantly auditing, and I can't thank you enough for that because it'll keep us on budget and it'll stop us from having any overages and oopses have to go back and redo something. So mm -hmm. I, I can't thank you enough for all of that. I know it's a lot of work and, and I know you meet regularly um, Alderman Dowd and as does Mr. Smith and so on. So um, it makes us, makes us look better <laughs> when you do the work you're doing, so thank you. I actually want to. I want to go off of that and and what you brought up earlier, Miss Lamphere, about our touring of the middle schools. And Miss Julio was talking about it. Um, it to have grown up here and like been in those schools as a kid, and then going in there as an adult and seeing them now, it feels like the schools are so much more student centered and not just like places that we store kids for a day, with the open windows and the interactive, um, you know furniture and, and whiteboards and stuff, it really just felt like this is a, this is a place made for students to grow. Um, and it was, it was really eye-opening to go in there kind of, you know, in this, in this stage of life and be like, man, Where was this I wish I had this. <laughs> <laughs> but it really, there's such a huge difference when you sit there and you listen to the principals and you listen to the teachers and you listen to what, you know, the special ed department needs. It's, it's evident in the schools now that we are, we are student focused in their growth and not just in, in keeping them, you know, occupied during the day. So I just feel like we have a very different view of what education is and it's, it literally starts on the ground floor. So it's just it's, uh, so neat to see. So thank really you. Really re rewarding when somebody, when we've been along, involved in this project as long as I have, uh, it seems like forever. Um, <laughs> But the original concept was years ago, the Grass Board of Ed no, I'm just kidding. Approved, <laughs> approved the middle school concept. Unfortunately, we had junior high schools, mm -hmm. and they didn't meet the requirements of the middle school concept. Mm -hmm. And that was what this project was all about. And that was to make the transition from elementary school to high school much easier. We always lost kids in the middle schools. Mm -hmm. And I think we have a much better process now. 
and 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 the design that Harriman put together was for that middle school concept, you know, with the uh, different areas for the kids to sort of isolate and study on their own, to have lots of light, to have, you know, comforting colors. Uh, I mean, is the list goes on and on. Mm -hmm. And we had a meeting <coughs> five, six years ago in Elm Street on the original, where we had the members of the public and staff come in and discuss the overall design goals mm -hmm. for the middle school, and that's what we've been following. So it, it's kudos to the design team, the people that implement the design, mm -hmm. and Harvey and all the other contractors involved. So um, it is, it is a, a good feeling to go into those schools and see, mm -hmm. see what's going on. Um, so any other comments? No? And by the way, I just want to mention one other thing. We, we are in constant contact with the superintendent and, and the assistant superintendents on, on these school districts thinking on different things. Um, sometimes we forget to mention that, uh, but uh, the new superintendent and assistant superintendents have been far more involved than perhaps in the past, and, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Okay. We have a good team going all around the whole city. Oh, good. So any, uh, we don't need a non-public. Is there a motion? Good job. Thank you, Ms. <laughs> Bush. <laughs> motion on the floor is to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We're adjourned at 926 p.m. <laughs>